to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Jesus, we love your name. Let's lift our hands and give him all the praise. All the praise. For the beautiful one. For the beautiful God. Hallelujah. In one minute, can you give him all the thanks for tonight? Just bless him. Bless him from the depth of your heart. Hallelujah. Hold hands with someone close to you and let's just pray in the spirit for a minute or two. For he will bless us. Hold hands with someone and pray. Prophesy. Pray in the spirit. you to pray just one prayer and say lord may my unbelief not stop anything that you are able to do in my life lift your voice and pray they limited god in the wilderness by saying can god make a way please make sure you are praying don't look around pray from the depth of your heart we are believers. We are believers. We believe in your limitless anointing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, the hearing of faith and the working of miracles in my life, I receive that grace tonight. Can we pray? The hearing of faith that produces the working of miracles. Can you lift your voice and play? Please be serious. The hearing of faith. The hearing of faith and the working of miracles. The hearing of faith. hallelujah hallelujah god bless you just squeeze the hand of someone left and right to mean good evening and then be seated please bless you hallelujah worship team god bless you let's honor our worship team awesome people awesome people most times we honor them and then we forget when I say honor the worship team, many of us just look at the vocalist and then you leave the instrumentalist out. I think these guys are brilliant people. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amazing. Beautiful ministration. Hallelujah. You're the beautiful God. The beautiful God will not create ugly lives. Are we together? Tonight, God is going to change our lives again. What I'm going to be teaching, I truly believe with all my heart, 
that it will contribute in no small way to building our effectiveness in the kingdom you know these words come week in week out and um, they are tailor made they are first and foremost revealed by the spirit but also designed to build us very specifically so that we become very effective in the kingdom I want to talk tonight along the lines of kingdom advancement there are a few things that I think that the Lord would have us know tonight and um, the worship team just set the pace very powerfully with that. How we love your name, Jesus, you're the beautiful one. We love your name. God's coming back again. So how I love your name, Jesus, the beautiful one. I love your name. Lord, I love your name, Jesus. just sang it from my spirit it just came out like an arrow hallelujah the concept of kingdom advancement is not a new concept in this house we have um, dealt with different series at different points in time attempting to help us understand what the kingdom is all about and um, the concepts of the kingdom and how to advance the kingdom so we've we've taught several messages different dimensions different approaches but just a little refresher so that i'll connect with what i want to discuss today we have learned and for those of us who are just learning um there are two dimensions you may want to write it down again there are two dimensions to kingdom advancement every time we talk about the advancement of god's kingdom it is first and foremost important for every and any believer to be interested in this subject if you are not interested in the concept and the whole idea of kingdom advancement then it means you do not love god and you're not a contributor to the building of his kingdom kingdom advancement generally speaking refers to before i give you the dimensions um, it refers to any listen and every scriptural mechanism that is deployed to establish the lordship of christ listen please any and every scriptural mechanism that is deployed right to establish the lordship of christ first across the hearts of men or in the hearts of men and then across every strata of human activities any and every scriptural mechanism that is deployed like an arsenal to the end that the lordship of christ be established in the hearts of men and then across every strata of human activities 
that's the definition of kingdom advancement so we say we are advancing the kingdom to the degree to which we are making use of every scriptural arsenal it must be scriptural to advance the frontiers of the kingdom by this definition it suggests that there are two dimensions to kingdom advancement number one is establishing the lordship of the christ in the hearts of men this is very important you will want to write that the first dimension to kingdom advancement is the establishment of the lordship of jesus christ in the hearts of men and then the second dimension is taking the culture the principles and the ideologies of the kingdom and using them to transform society so the first dimension has to do with a spiritual reality establishing the lordship of the christ in the hearts of men and then the second dimension has to do with communicating his ideology across every strata of human activities it's important you know this the first dimension of kingdom advancement establishing the lordship of christ um, in the hearts of men will require what we know to be evangelism and discipleship i'm just doing a recap we have taught this the whole idea of what we know to be evangelism and discipleship they are the structures that were designed by god to bring men to bring the establishment of the lordship of christ across the hearts of men um, there are all kinds of versions and understandings about discipleship and about evangelism and this is not in any way attempting to interpret it in the religious way that we know because for many people when we talk about evangelism or discipleship the concept has been so abused it's like an indoctrination into a denomination and their tenets that's not necessarily God's idea of discipleship evangelism and discipleship is the scriptural pathway to establishing the lordship of christ across the hearts of men then the second dimension taking the influence of the kingdom his culture his ideology permeating society when we are able to successfully do these two things then it can be said that the kingdom of god is advancing within a territory or in a dispensation my concern this evening this night is um, the establishment of the lordship of christ in the hearts of men i want to just zoom it a little there and um, help us to be very effective at doing this by god's grace i think that we understand the concept of influence and how to take the the light and the power and the culture of jesus christ across territories we've spoken about different mountains and how that we need to establish the value system of the kingdom but i think that many people do not know how to establish the lordship of christ across the hearts of men so i want us to look at a few things that i believe will be very very important daniel chapter 12 please verse 3 daniel chapter 12 verse 3 media we have a lot of scriptures today so please you'll be ready for that um this will be more of a study tonight i just want us to pray later on but um, i really want us to have understanding i like us to read together it's projected as loud as you can one to read and they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament uh-huh and they that turn many to righteousness as the stars so there is such a state where a man can turn many to righteousness it says they that be wise they shall be as the brightness of the firmament and they that turn many not few in god's mind he desires that every believer would participate listen in this dimension of kingdom advancement as far as the establishment of the lordship of christ in the hearts of men is concerned largely we have left this ministry to evangelists we have left this ministry to those we call the fivefold they are the only ones who make the altar calls they are the ones who print tracts 
they are the ones who do all of these things and then for those who even engage in what we know to be evangelical activities they largely do not do it with understanding they just do it um in honor of a a a, a suggestion or a program by the church or some kind of structure that makes them feel spiritual you see the thing about the kingdom is anything you are doing that is not out of understanding you will not be blessed from it understanding is very important understanding is very important when carrying out any kingdom activity is is religion you see religion is an attempt to do spiritual things in ignorance and in the strength of the flesh and all through scripture you see that people who did even nice things religiously they did not receive any reward the system of the kingdom is such that you must take out time to understand the dynamics of whatever it is you want to engage in and then on the strength of that understanding you will now get up and act acting just because others are doing it acting just because you are told to do it acting just because you want to you know ease yourself of the guilt of separation will not bring the desired results that's why we do things for a short time and we do not have the impetus to continue the drive to continue because we largely carry out activities especially in the body of christ there's too much copying many people do not sit down to find out why why this why this why do i have to pray in tongues well i just saw apostle praying in tongues and i think he's good for me that's nice but a time must come in your life where you must have a personal understanding are we together why do i have to tithe i think everybody who i know to be rich is tithing so i should just do it that's not enough conviction is very important in the kingdom you must have a a sense of personal persuasion it produces restful confidence so no matter how sacrificial the activities are your conviction sponsors the strength to go through it lots of people do not prevail over the things they want to do because we largely act without conviction we copy one another we copy men of god we copy churches and then we do not have the strength and the emotional the grace to push it to the limit and to stay there until results are produced the lord will help us tonight in jesus name I, I have been burdened, especially in recent times. Um, the Lord has been putting this burden in my heart concerning the need for the body of Christ to get back into what we have known in the body of Christ as the ministry of soul winning. Are we together? the establishment of the lordship of christ in the hearts of men you know sometimes it's like wear and tear we can fade off certain areas of concentration while pursuing others in an attempt to look for certain things we sometimes drift away from the things that represent the foundation the the pivot the epicenter of christianity and our mandate as given by god sometimes we can veer off sincerely but we veer off and then we find out that we are doing other useful kingdom things but we may miss out on that which represents the foundation of the desire of god all through scripture you see from the old testament to the new testament the lord communicating his desire to draw men who have been alienated from him are we together all through scripture he would speak sometimes through the prophets and um, liken a nation to a harlot that has left her husband you hear scriptures like draw near to me and i will draw near to you when jesus came he used different parables that suggested restoration the parable of the lost talent the parable of um the, the prodigal son you know all kinds of um um expressions to communicate the father's desire to have the heart of people that have been rebellious to his way and his counsel turn back to him and i think that while it is true that this is not the only part of kingdom advancement this is a major part 
of kingdom advancement in fact sincerely speaking listen in order of priority kingdom advancement should first start with establishing the lordship of christ in the hearts of men first before the systems so if we have industrialization we have civilization as a use of as a result of the practice of the culture of the kingdom and we have people going to hell we have people who are not serious with god you know that that is that is um that is not balanced is that true god desires first and foremost more than civilization more than prosperity more than education more than you know people who have come into the working knowledge of the principles of the kingdom god wants the hearts of men the hearts of men to return to him in truth and in sincerity altar calls in many assemblies is almost not observed again and the average believer may be able to boast of other spiritual activities like tithing like giving you know like service in the house of god these are very important aspects of kingdom activities but many people cannot tell you that they have contributed actively to winning and establishing souls everybody say winning and establishing souls say it one more time winning and establishing souls every single one of us here if i ask you to pick up the mic and tell me your experience you will tell me of one person here and there who insisted until you came to the knowledge of christ and for those who were already born again one or two people who had to um sacrificially follow you up until you are now grounded to a, an extent in the things of god and you are helping others too but many of us are unable to extend that spiritual benevolence to others so we sit back enjoying everything that um has come to us through redemption and not extending it to others and most times we tell ourselves i'm not a man of god are we together i'm not a man of god so during a corporate evangelism like we have it we can walk around and talk to people but as a personal revelation that part of your kingdom responsibility as a believer as you'll be learning shortly it is a responsibility listen soul winning establishing the lordship of christ in the hearts of men is the responsibility of every believer it's not a suggestion to choose if you want or not it's, it's, it's like breathing it is part of the component of your spiritual existence and if we are not taught and pushed into that point then there will be no continuity a time will come you will find a whole generation bankrupt of spiritual things do you know do you know this was the mistake of many of our parents they loved god they loved jesus christ they kept the values of the kingdom but they did not think it to be such a big deal to pay attention to transferring the lordship of christ to the heart of the children so you can find a man and a wife um, you know his wife who loved god so much but you will be surprised maybe a pastor and his wife and then you will be very very surprised that they have never actively preached to their child do you know talking to people about spiritual things is not the same as saving them you can discuss tithing you can discuss rapture you can discuss hellfire and heaven that's not preaching so that we are around people discussing the things of god which is good and very valuable but have we paid attention as to whether this person that i'm talking about has my son has my daughter has my friend has my roommate can i truly attest to the fact that this person is saved and if yes is this person actively being established and grounded in the things of god it's a great concern in the heart of god many of us don't care so once you have a child who is doing well in school whether or not he's a serious christian he can come to church do you know many parents do not talk to their children about god the children can learn around but to have a day when you preach to your child 
and lead him to Jesus Christ. No. We leave them to other people. Are we together now? Do you know it's so embarrassing when the closest people around us have to walk with us and never get to know Jesus and then after many years someone somewhere will be the one to come and save them. How many children are taught about Jesus but never given an opportunity to declare his lordship? Look, talking about Jesus does not save men. Talking about him, talking about spiritual things, talking about rapture, talking about heaven, talking about grace, talking about whatever, it does not save men. Men must understand and receive the gospel of salvation and be given an opportunity to declare their willingness to accept his lordship so there are so many people around the body of Christ but they are not saved and let me tell you what hardens them because they've been around the things of God so much they know scriptures are we together they can talk they've done so many things that look spiritual and so they convince themselves that by those activities they are saved they are not saved at all do you know let me tell you even coming out marching out to come for altar call does not save men that's not what saves people there's nowhere in the bible that says the moment you come out in an altar call you are saved no these are just representations that have been adopted by the body of christ to help and guide people to be serious about their decision and then to have a way of getting their details and follow them up but that's not what saves people in fact let me surprise you reciting salvation prayer is not even what saves people because the bible says you must believe you can stand and you are joking you are just talking because you have to repeat what you have been told and not be saved and go back and you are still hell bound and a candidate of hell soul winning soul winning is not just saving people's souls soul winning is establishing them let me emphasize this when you get people saved and leave them the way they are they will not grow and chances are that their, their, their lives eventually many of them will derail and even get back to their lives Establishing the Lordship of Christ is more than just saying a salvation prayer. So you guide someone and he says, Lord Jesus, you know, I am born again. And you are happy. You say, this guy, I, I saved him. He's my soul. The key is establishment. 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 Very, very important. That believers not only come and bring people, but see to it that they are established. all through scripture we see that the lord um, has emphasized the need of people who are lost to come and to draw nigh to him so every believer is called to participate in the advancement of the kingdom but more specifically tonight in establishing the lordship of christ across the hearts of men there is nothing as beautiful as a life that has been changed transformed you know when when how many of you have seen someone you know was not serious with god and then all of a sudden you look at that person a few years later and find out that the person is a burning and a shining light there's nothing more beautiful than a life whose values changed a life whose ideology is changed someone can come and say i love the lord with all my heart that's how some of you were you are even surprised finding yourself in the house of god loving god so passionately and pressing into the things of god some of you know where you were who you were and all sorts of stories but by his grace look what he's turned your life into now so there is a spiritual reality that must be established in the hearts of men being born again is not just an emotional thing it must come with transformation it must come with transformation when men are not transformed by the power of the word then it is not the word that saved them there must be transformation 
so there's a lot of faulty supposed born again many believers who claim they are born again and for many years many years yes of course i know that our growth in the spirit is progressive but at a point in your life i should be able to look at you and see your values altered the same thing you used to believe before and after no change the same way you used to live no change the same convictions the same ideology believe me you are not born again are we together now yeah there should be progressive transformation as a sign that the seed of the word of god has been planted within your spirit and if we don't pay attention to this we will keep celebrating crowds for instance and we'll keep looking at a society that is depraved men and women who god you see that's why there are so many members in church but very little people that god can find space to move with why is it that we have millions of members congregations scattered around the world but god is still looking for people because there are very few people i'm telling you this who have experientially allowed the lordship of christ to be established in their hearts they are the ones who have given him space to find expression through their lives before i continue i want to ask you a very sincere question can you look at your life you who was or were and you who is now can you note a noticeable um tangible transformation if you cannot find a transformation in ideology in beliefs in passion in priority you need to revisit what you have called being saved say amen praise the lord mm. all kinds of music before all kinds of music after anyhow living before anyhow living after and you say it doesn't matter no it, it matters you are not born again it's as simple as that there must be some degree of priority the passion look let me tell you something when a woman is pregnant are we together when a woman is pregnant the transformation that occurs in her is mandatory and automatic mandatory and automatic except except she has not taken in if she has taken in it will begin to alter her psychologically physiologically there will be noticeable alterations that's how it must be if the seed of the word of god has been planted in you then there should be certain things your appetites your desires your values and most importantly your priority let me tell you how you know you are really saved is that your priority about god and the things of god supersedes every other thing yeah that's what our parents told us when they got born again all of a sudden there's this song that says um when all things that surrounds me become shadow in the light of you that's what happens a new life a new life and all of a sudden you look at the things that represented your aspirations and your passions and they look like shadows compared to what you have found this is how jesus teaches about salvation that someone had a field listen and then he found a treasure the parable of the treasure he found a treasure when he saw the excellency of that treasure what did he do he went and made sure that he sold everything bought that property and remained there but what we do is we take the treasure and go somewhere else that's not salvation you are not saved what i'm saying i know that is hitting a lot of us but i am telling you sincerely it is important if you're a pastor here don't sit down and keep smiling at your congregation because they are smiling back at you make sure they are saved make sure that the people you are leading that the people you labor on day and night are saved you see that passion to see souls saved is not in many of us so you can have a roommate you can have a friend you can even have your loved one and not care there is no contribution from your part 
to make God a priority not saying anything not doing anything I cannot see any active effort on your part that you are making to turn their hearts to righteousness is God helping us tonight it is part of our kingdom responsibility if we love God to be intentionally committed listen intentionally committed not circumstantially committed if it just so happens that I find a soul that needs Jesus and he says sir I want to be born again then you lead him to Christ that's not evangelism that's not evangelism the same way people intentionally look for jobs because you know without that job there is no food the same way people intentionally look for husband and wife someone comes and says Jimmy I'm, I'm trying to look for a life partner you see how serious the person is that's how serious you must also be with soul winning see this is not religion there is a spirit the spirit of the Christ that is at work in you will push you to do that you see the gospel when truly received and the power therein will you will be too grateful to keep quiet find out people in the bible who receive things from jesus even when jesus said don't tell anybody they were too grateful to keep quiet the madman at gadara the bible says he went to the decapolis and brought the people remember the, the that woman who married um six men and jesus being the seventh man in her life the bible says she left her she went to fetch water but she encountered something that was superior she left it when god is one of many important things in your life there's an encounter you've not had you hear me say this all the time listen listen the god being a priority non-negotiable priority under no circumstance regardless of what excuses you would have should God at any point be second place in your life that's what must happen to you first you must experience it so that when you get someone born again you know what the person should become like when you get people born again and they do not yet have your passion you know the job has not finished you should draw them to a point where it eats them up. It's called the zeal of the Lord. Hallelujah. So you can stay 10 years. How many husbands whose wives are not saved and they don't care? How many wives whose husbands are not saved? How many children whose parents are not saved? Look at me. Over 90%, if not everyone, if not everyone including myself you look at your immediate family or your extended family you will find people who you know are on their way to hell it's a highway to hell are we together now yeah i know that you hear people say this emotionally just preaching evangelism but i want to tell you something i don't mean to scare you but i want to seriously tell you there is a real place call hell there is a real place today like this call hell are we together the bible says and books were open listen to me books were open and another book was open which was the book of life hear what the bible says whosoever's name was not found written thereof the bible did say he was advised to wait somewhere he was cast into the lake of fire that was burning with brimstone and sulfur that's what the bible says the bible says it is appointed unto man to die once listen carefully it says afterwards the judgment it didn't say after that a celebration after it is appointed unto man you see in my little life and the privilege that ministry has afforded me please listen carefully i have had the opportunity to be at several funerals i've had the opportunity to watch the bodies of people i knew were once alive now dead at that point brothers and sisters please look at me whether you have a phd listen please whether you had a first class are we together 
no matter what it is that you have had that you call your accomplishment in life i don't care what you have done i don't care where you have gone to at in five minutes not breathing it becomes useless has it occurred to you i can be standing here looking nice with my kaftan and no breath and i'm gone this body lies lifeless you will wake it you will pray on it you will prophesy on it you will pour oil on it the body lies down lifeless what does that tell you it tells you we have to focus on the things that are eternal listen 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 seeing then that the relevance of the things we chase and pursue are only relevant for as long as this body is alive so if i give somebody school fees that's good he's going to school if you say you want to marry and i give you five hundred thousand to help you and marry you will like me you will be very happy but the moment your body this body you are seeing can no longer host your spirit everything becomes useless jesus gave us a parable that is so touching about a man um lazarus and the rich man do you still study your bible or the job took it away there was a man who the bible says was very wealthy and there was another man who was lazarus i'm not talking of poverty and prosperity i'm talking of two people are we together now the bible tells us that the eternal destiny of that man was nothing like his life on earth brothers and sisters this is what the bible says if our hope is only in this life only in this life we are of all men most miserable have you seen them slaughter a chicken you've seen chicken one minute it has life trying to escape and you are very messless over it you put it down and in a few minutes the life is gone just like a vapor and that thing is lying down there and when you hold it two hours later you are about to eat it you look at this this was once alive now it's in your hands and you're about to eat it the same way like that chicken listen nobody may eat you but i guarantee you a time will come listen please very importantly a time will come where this mortal body will either be laid to rest or will be translated to another body it really doesn't matter which one comes as far as the glory that is coming is concerned because it makes no difference but one thing i can tell you is this there is nobody nobody who is not born again who has received the son who will make heaven one two there is nobody who has not received who, who has rejected christ that will spend eternity with him because it's not about heaven we are still coming back to the earth but the question is so that where i am there you may be only true believers shall be right our uncles are not true believers listen our aunties are not true believers we watch them we know they are not born again our colleagues are not true believers but we do not care we do not know that it is a responsibility do you know the last time i checked which was many years ago statistically eight people die per second how many people from when koinonia started till now calculate if we are still working by that eight people and part of all those people who died some were tongue-talking christians some were pastors some were prophets are we together now they've all died no matter what you think about them see this life is brief I, i'm waking us up to focus on the things that represent priorities for the kingdom god has priorities and we must we must train ourselves to adjust in the midst of all of the blessings i'm still going to talk about a few more things but i have to press this as a foundation so winning is not a suggestion so winning kingdom advancement establishing the lordship of christ across the hearts of men 
it's not a suggestion it's not for pastors it's not for those who are free and don't have a job yet no take it down Mike I want to sing a song Don Moen's song when it's all been said and done there is just one thing that matters did I do my best to live for truth did I live my life for you when it's all been said and done all my treasures will mean nothing only what i've done for love's reward will stand the test of time lord your mercy is so great that you look beyond our weakness and find pure as gold in my clay, turning sinners into saints and i will always sing your praise here on earth and ever after for you've shown me heaven's my true home when it's all been said and done you're my life Every other thing in life only becomes meaningful when your eternal destiny is secured. Did you hear what I said? Every other thing in life, hear me please. Every other thing in life, I don't care what it is, is only relevant when you can guarantee that your soul is saved. And then you must extend that passion to as many people as the grace of God upon your life can make happen. Every time there is a bereavement, they send me text messages. And I get a text message. Oh, apostle, so, so, so has died. And you know, the first thing that comes to my heart, most times, over 90% of the people send me a text and say, Apostle, I know if you speak a word, he will come back to life. Frankly speaking, I believe in miracles. I believe in miracles. I've seen great miracles in my life and in this ministry. But my concern, listen, my concern is not so much about bringing the person back to life. Listen, as it is knowing that this person died in Christ. You can die in money. Where are you going? Mention it. You can die in education. Where are you going to? You can die in politics. Where are you going to? Die in an aircraft. The only ones that are wise are those who live in Christ and if need be, die in Christ. It's not that you died in what? You can die in worry, it's still hell. You can die in stress, it's still hell. Please, hear what I am saying. You see people dying all the time and we keep watching them. There are people today, every time you think of, you know right now, based on the Bible, except if there are other mysteries we do not yet currently know, I believe that there are many supernatural things that we cannot all explain but as far as the revelation of the bible and our understanding of it now has afforded us we know that those who did not die in christ are lost and gone they left their houses behind listen to me they left their certificates behind i'm not saying those things are not important but they are only important listen they are only important when the major things are in place. Is your father born again? If you hear right now, look at me, listen, wherever your father is. If you hear right now that he drops dead, will you rejoice? Will you cry in joy? Or will you cry in grief? 
if you hear that your mother has gone to be with the Lord will you rejoice will you cry in joy or cry in grief what of your roommate what of you because there are people who will never take this thing seriously you will always come for koinonia you will always go to churches and do a lot of things but are you saved it's a very serious question that you are working for god does not mean you are saved that you have a christian name joshua jesus our salvation no 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 As we worship you, let all the world come and see how the mercy we receive from you can set men free. That's very important. They need to come. We need to participate in getting. This is not adding members to a church. Listen, listen. Now, this is where I have a problem. Come. When, when we go for evangelism, for most people sadly speaking we are just shopping for larger congregations now of course it should culminate into church growth but the foundation listen is to grant that this person has an opportunity to be turned to righteousness do you know i can get this brother saved filled with the holy spirit loving the lord and as i've gotten him saved I've gotten 200 other people saved in him. Are we together? Because this person now will take those values. Look how some of you, a few of you that have really participated in soul winning, look what has happened through your life to others. I'll never forget one of our ladies years ago. She might be streaming following right now. And um, her entire family, they were not born again. None of them was saved. Then she got born again. And God granted her grace. I think her younger brother also got born again. And then eventually, you know, she kept pressing passionately and intentionally. The mom now got born again. It was left the father alone. That man refused and said, no way, he will not get born again. I know if you ask her what she wanted God to do in her family, it's not to build a house. It's not to go and build a house in the village and prove a point. She just wanted everyone to be saved. I remember very clearly like yesterday the day her dad was saved when her father was saved she called me crying we met around then in the campus chapel and she said look her whole family had been saved do you know when he was saved his family members had to drive to his place and they say which worry made you to give up what you were practicing and give your life to jesus if his finances we can sort it out and the man got saved under living faith <laughs> So that 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 fire has come to stay the joy of salvation when we give testimonies and we say praise the lord i built a house somebody just built a house and he dashed me we stand up we roll on the ground but when we say praise the lord someone god saved we just clap and please go and sit down because of our priority our priority I've seen a few people that have trusted God to be saved, get saved, and I've been surprised at the joy, the joy that filled my heart. Who in your life needs to be saved through you? Not needs to be saved. Who in your life needs to be saved through you? There are people who the prophetic mandate is on you to bring their salvation. And you're not doing anything about it. I challenge every mother here and every father here after this meeting go and sit down with your children if you can especially some of the little ones don't allow this our little the moment they have gotten to an age of discretion if they can steal if they can fight they can be saved talk to them are we together now you don't allow children just leave them around a child will insult you visitors are talking is answering back that means he understands Jesus you can call him and preach intelligently and let that child say when a child has not gotten to the age of discretion the salvation of the parents cover the child but the moment he gets to the age of discretion from that's why there are no children in hell 
because the salvation of their parents will cover them God bless you we have a threefold participation let's rush quickly threefold participation there are only three ways we can partner with God in soul winning and the establishment of the Lordship of Christ across the hearts of men only three ways and I want to teach you now please pay attention because it has nothing to do with whether you are a pastor listen I think I should press this in this is not the work of pastors this is not the work of of apostles and prophets and missionaries and mission agencies this is not the work of men and women of God this is a responsibility that is saddled on every believer it's just that we are not taught that when you are saved we teach people about their rights in Christ but we never teach people about their responsibility in Christ the only reason you have rights is for responsibilities you cannot be taught about your right in Christ the inheritance that you have gotten and not be taught what your kingdom responsibility is with every privilege comes responsibility every privilege there's no privilege that does not come with responsibility if I buy you a car then you start maintaining it you come to me to maintain the car I return it back because it means you are not qualified it's a privilege but I I, I give you that on the strength of an understanding that you can maintain it is that true when God gives you an anointing he expects you to press to gain the character dimension to sustain it that's the responsibility that comes with that privilege if you love privileges without responsibility then you are an irresponsible person so we have a threefold participation the first dimension or the first participation the first way any one of us can participate actively in establishing the Lordship of Christ across the hearts of men. Number one is the ministry of warfare and intercession. Write it down. The first participation that everyone and no one has an excuse because you don't pay for prayer. There's no, it's not something you go and wait for an ATM. No, the grace is there once you are alive and you are in Christ. The ministry of what? Warfare and intercession. Why do we have to pray? So that the hearts of men will be open to receive the gospel. We are going to look at a number of scriptures. 2 Corinthians 4, please. Verse 3 to 4. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 3 to 4. And then you give us 1 Corinthians chapter 6, chapter 16, verse 9. The ministry of warfare and intercession. Look up, please. We're going to read a lot of scriptures. We we'll have to be very fast. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are what? So, as obvious as these truths are, when somebody is not in Christ, it's not as easy as you think it is there is there are lots of things you can believe now because the spirit of god is in you to help you believe how you know it was the spirit of god is because you criticize this before you criticize praying in tongues you criticize a lot of things but now you have embraced it it's by the spirit it's not just by growth and maturity physically speaking if our gospel be hid it is hid to them that are lost uh -huh, next verse verse 4 please in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not. Are you seeing why they believe not? Because although they are looking at you, their minds, their spirits are blinded. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. So you can see that man. The moment you leave Koinonia, he looks at you and says now nah, what, what kind of thing are you put doing you sing for over over 30 minutes are you the only one I mean, can't you just sing praise and worship for 10 minutes and hurry up and go don't just insult them there is something that is making that happen 
when they say shout Jesus or do this and you are doing and somebody is watching and say, ah, how can responsible people behave like this there is a spirit that makes spiritual things of non-effect to people who are not in Christ that's what necessitates the ministry of intercession if your wife or your husband is obviously not open to the things of God don't hate them don't fight there is a spirit listen there are spirits that stand to make sure that people do not return to God in truth so you can see someone who is a smoker you will sit down and talk to him while you are talking to him the guy will say Kai, this will be the last cigarette and you are watching him you are even encouraged then you rub his back and say you are a good boy two weeks later you check his pocket and it's not just one you will see a packet because there is a spirit listen counseling never saves people you don't counsel people into salvation that encounter with the seed of the word of God that breaks everything because it's not physical like falling under the anointing we have little respect for it if someone falls under the anointing it has a physical manifestation and so we say wow great power was on him but when someone gets born again most times we trivialize it because we think it is not supernatural enough the ministry of warfare and intercession have you noticed for those of you who live with so many people who are not born again is when you pray and return from spiritual things that there are hostilities have you noticed that the moment you finish praying that's the day you will fight with your father or your mother it's not normal there are spirits they respond just like Daniel finished praying and the spirits began to move certain people in Babylon to come and put a decree so you finish praying you just rounded up three days fasting as you are rounding it up there is war all of a sudden your food becomes salty madam you are in trouble no there is a spirit look men are slaves to the spirits that control or influence them this body is a is a dumb terminal this body is only an executor of whatever spirit controls or influences it you have to know this about people so that you can learn to love people this is one of the understandings that sponsors loving people it's difficult to love people based on the way they behave you have to look beyond that you have to access an information that is more than that so if your younger brother tries to fight you and beat you and you look at him and say i will kill you you are fighting in the flesh there is a spirit no sane person will do that when a woman carries bottle and breaks the head of her husband in response to no money or anger do you think that i know she thought she was just angry look at jesus and peter get thee behind me satan ah -ah. peter looks at jesus and says me he says look peter i know you don't know but i am seen in the realm of the spirit satan came and perched at your soul and took advantage of your voice to advise me not to go to the cross and he saw it he said satan desired to sift you like wheat but i have prayed for you that your faith fail not he said and when thou art converted strengthen your brethren because he will come and do the same to them demons speak to men they don't have to be under the influence of or, 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 under under the anointing there are many people saying nonsense you know it's a spirit that is speaking there's a way you see men talk you know that's not them an interchange between them and another spirit the same way you hear a man speak and you know this is not an ordinary man speaking it is got to be a divine spirit speaking through him so you have to pray when you religiously stand up to go and win souls like that you can return with casualties you must pray challenge those spirits that's what we do in koinonia before every service the prayer department is praying I am praying we, we clear the atmosphere so when we come we have already sent an incense of prayer and once we begin to speak the word of God penetrates the hearts of people like he's doing yours now and when you make the altar call you see people coming and you are even surprised seeing those who are coming because prayer and intercession listen when the spirits that influence men and blind their minds leave you will be surprised to see how innocent and fragile those people are are we together 
I once ministered to a gentleman somewhere um, while they, they used to do counseling at my place and this guy entered and he just entered and sat down and came in with the mother and the mother said this, this boy I, I'm tired of him he's a terrible person he's this and that and while I was looking at him the Lord opened my eyes and I'm telling you there was a spirit comfortably comfortably when I say comfortable you know that this spirit is not under pressure whatsoever and I saw that this is what makes this boy behave this way they said when this boy is angry true God is my witness even five people will not be able to hold him is that a normal human being The ministry of prayer listen before you do anything pray pray i think this is worth talking about i'm not necessarily teaching on prayer tonight but learn to pray let prayer precede your action don't sit down and assume you know what to do pray 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 before taking decisions pray before taking actions there are spirits that are antichrist everywhere the antichrist is not just a person the antichrist is a spirit that is at work now opposing the purposes of god in the lives of men pray you are going for a job interview you just say i got first class you are not praying you want to go and save someone you are not praying the moment you are going the spirit is waiting there as you are entering he will tell you see I tried calling you yesterday you didn't pick you think i'm your mate say sorry i came to talk to you about this get, get out of here and then when you leave the spirit leaves and the person is back you see people acting you know it's not them they may never admit it but brothers and sisters there is a spiritual realm everybody say there is a spiritual realm that controls the happenings of everything here listen it is the day you want to come for koinonia that the person who is supposed to give you money will vow and say i will never give you money again why it was not about that it's because you are going somewhere and you will hear something that will change you you've got to pray people who do not pray become victims i know we live in a time where people say it's not all about prayer <laughs> it's about it oh is about it in this wicked world that we live in you have to pray keep the forces of darkness where they belong keep the forces of darkness where they belong you must pray you must pray he spake a parable to the end that men ought always not often to pray so you pray lord i'm coming for koinonia i know that there are people coming with burdens and there are wicked spirits that will try to cause trouble for them on the way so that they will not get to cgc there are all kinds of things like their phone missing like their wallet missing so that they will stay arguing on it and not arrive there and hear the word that will change them so we pray we silence those spirits And while you are, you just plan that I'm not coming for Koinonia today. Say why? Say I don't have transport. Someone else wants to come to Koinonia. In answer to that prayer, the Holy Ghost will lead the friend to come and say, let's go. Say I'm not ready. Say I'll pay for you. You see, that's an answer. It, it looked like action in the earth, but prayer programmed it. Prayer programmed it. How many believers live their lives carelessly and we are victims the purposes of god is not advanced because many do not pray when was the last time you took a prayer request and knelt down in your prayer altar woke up in the night to pray just for intercession father increase more souls salvation don't say me i'm the shy type can't you pray men ought always to pray and not to faith let me tell you listen there are many of our loved ones i guarantee you from now to december if you will pray for them you'll be surprised what will happen they may not listen to you but one day god will take them to one meeting where one man of god is and before you know it the power of god will carry them in that meeting the next thing you just hear they'll tell you i've been filled with the holy spirit i'm two weeks old <laughs> praying in tongues everybody say I will pray say I will intercede 
warfare prayers warfare prayers are not discussions listen warfare prayers are not prayers of petition right we have a teaching like that hopefully next year on prayer a series on prayer there is a difference between supplication there's a difference between petition warfare prayer is you taking advantage of all the tools that has been given to you in redemption the name of jesus the blood of jesus the word of god these are tools that are given to engage the forces of darkness and establish the victory that has been wrought in christ over people over territories when we talk of warfare and intercession that's not the, that's one of the reasons listen listen hold on that's one of the reasons why god gave us the prayer language of tongues it's not just for you to feel anointed it's a mechanism to help you engage in intense warfare intense warfare do you know let me just digress a bit and speak to someone here you are where you are now because you have not caused the gates of hell to give way we don't we don't it's not by physical strength this victory is wrought in the secret place one hour two hours you listen listen let me teach you how to pray you see you don't pray come david you don't pray blindly you use your mind like a like a picture to zoom the thing that you are trusting God for and you direct your prayer there. Are you getting what I'm saying? The Bible, I will show you where this is. The Bible says he can do above the things that we ask or your imagination must play a role in prayer. The tongues is directing it but your mind is like you keep a picture. So I'm praying for my family. That's what is on my mind. As I'm praying in tongues, I know that these tongues is not for edification of my spirit. These tongues is for warfare to that end. Yeah, that's how to pray. That's how to pray fire that produces results. You lock yourself off your phone. That's not the time to be pinging and praying. You are not serious. You pray with your heart. See, let me tell you, I believe in corporate prayer, but I believe in personal prayer. There are certain dimensions you will only hit when you are alone. Hmm. There is a way you can be praying with somebody. At a point, the person will be tired and he will make you feel stupid. You too, you will feel guilty and say, oh yeah, let's round up. Father, we give you all the glory. Has God finished with you? Listen, when you are praying, the Holy Spirit is not there as a tenant. He's the direction of both the duration and the strategy of the prayer. You don't choose how long you just want to pray. You stay there till you command victory. I tell you, if, you, if that is established in the realm of the spirit, you can walk out and laugh and watch all the physical nonsense and jargons that happen because they have been settled in the realm of the spirit. Many people do not settle things in the realm of the spirit. That's why whatever comes to you physically destroys you. Unfortunately, it's unbelievers that know how to engage this the moment you speak to somebody and say see um you are not going to get promoted then he looks at you and says all right manager i've had you the next thing the guy said can i take one week uh break i just want to go and say hello to my family and the person rushes immediately in the night while you are snoring your way the person is there and all his anger is in the realm of the spirit he's with the herbalist there he's bathing he's drinking he's saying whatever things doing all kinds of things then they carry your picture and do all sorts of things and the herbalist will say he's done and then all of a sudden the manager is sleeping in the night and sees a stranger walk up in his dream and say if you don't promote this guy the guy will get up in the morning and call the board meeting and say look a few developments have been happening strangely in this company and we are promoting somebody listen you who is the christian you are there angry and saying but i'm qualified and the guy is saying congratulations sir. ah you are now a great man and then he takes the title of whatever to the shrine and that's how they move forward there are people who literally live with charms as in they live with it they, it's a daily bread it's their version of prayer they know they must be in constant touch that's why you talk to them they say be careful though. you are talking to me you will die like a chicken and you too that you don't and you, and die like, and you find out that your leg is already swelling before evening 
you don't confront darkness carelessly until you have stamina in the spirit. All this bragging we do in the body of Christ will land us in trouble. Will land us in big trouble. Jesus I know. Paul I know. Meaning there are some people that are not known. Can I say I must be known? Somebody say it. Can you pray in the spirit just in one minute? Sound an alarm to the gates of darkness. Rakata Prescadia. No, the fight is not physical. The fight is not physical. The fight cannot be physical. It's in the realm of the spirit. Victories are established in the realm of the spirit. The physical realm is only a, a realm where people act. They act what has been finished. Stop confronting realities from the physical realm. The job issue is spiritual. The salvation issue is spiritual. The stubbornness of your loved ones are spiritual. Stop wasting your time. Stop blaming people. It's from the realm of the spirit. That's how you command victory. The ministry does not just grow by publicity. It's in the realm of the spirit. Pray, pray. Skapata kata likatosh enkreto kata labakata seke 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 reko toko topa kata labawa mata pras kata. Oh yes, I am victorious. Kepo tosho la ba 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 ba. Every unsaved person we tear down those walls. We command the forces that stop them from hearing the gospel. Every spirit that stops them from going to the house of the Lord, we command it. Hallelujah. Please sit down. 1 Corinthians 6 verse 9. Thank you, David. Quickly. 1 mm. Corinthians 16 verse 9. Look up, please. Write these scriptures. I will just talk on them quickly and then we'll move to the next one. For a great door and effectual is open up to me. What is the limitation? There are what? The person wants to come. You say he stays close to Koinonia here. His house is just close by. It looks short in the physical, but in the spirit, the distance is far. It would take prayer to shorten it. Clear those forces off. Hmm. See, let me tell you. There is a way the devil can know you. Your voice. The same way you say hello and you know somebody's voice. Yeah, you can be known. Hmm. Because you are, you are a frequent uh, in, in, in network there are those there, there are frequent programs Th those you, you step into a package for those who are always calling many of us only call when there's trouble it must become a habit you must pray you are lying down and you just roll just for waking up for that one minute the devil hears it and then you sleep again mm. Let me tell you, when, when you are like that, you will be surprised what will happen to you. You will get up and just in a few minutes, you are just sitting down and the moment the thought of someone comes, he's not saved. That's not the time to say, oh, I think I'm missing him. No, Rika Tokaba. What is happening to him now? We secure him. Marakoto Sobadaka. Pray. And then you wake up with any dream that does not look like it. Oh, come on. See, I'm teaching you what I do. If I'm not doing it, you will know. You wake up with a dream that doesn't make sense as you are waking up. Eh? Before you, as you are waking up, the spirit that was sent on that errand will know that one who has understanding is there. I know it looks like I'm sounding silly. But this is how victories are commanded. So you look at men in the physical and you cannot see what they are doing physically. So you will be angry because you expect them to, to labor physically. But the labor is in the spirit. Hmm. 
any church listen there are three departments now every department is important especially in koinonia but hear me i'm speaking to pastors there are three departments in any church and any ministry if the devil wants to destroy that ministry there are three departments number one the ministerial team strike the shepherd and the sheep will scatter one the first place of attack of darkness is the shepherd the man of god or the ministerial team number two the worship team listen carefully they are vested with the responsibility of creating the atmosphere for the presence of god to find expression and the devil will do anything within his power to water down the efficacy of the presence of god number three the prayer department by the time the prayer and and for the prayer department it doesn't he there, there are very little things that kill prayer people big things don't destroy prayer people little things little things i like this lady why do you like her too and your entire robust prayer life comes under fire ah pride little things are you getting blessed any man of god who has spiritual sense will guard these ministries in his church or his ministry personally do you know let me tell you let me teach you one secret on how by the grace of god i administrate over here and it's like there's something god has done to my spirit it's like a rope god connected my spirit to every department all the departments in this ministry is like a rope huh the same way there is i mean it literally there is a level of course they rise and fall they move up and down but there is a level that no department must go under the moment they go under i pick it in the spirit immediately i know something is wrong either i must come and find out what is wrong or i must pray or whatever it is if the problem is from me you know for sure a retreat quick the, 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 every other thing is cancelled that's how you sustain fire you must be sensitive and discerning and prayer does that second corinthians chapter 5 second corinthians 1 verse 5 to 11 long reading quickly let me just take our time and let's read quickly we have a number of scriptures and i want us to read them one verse five okay it says for as the sufferings of christ abound in us so our consolation also abounded we are reading down quickly please down to 11 it says and whether we be afflicted it is for your consolation and salvation which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings which we also suffer this and that and that now listen it says hold on it says which we also suffer or whether it be comforted it is for your what and next verse and our hope of you is steadfast knowing that as ye are partakers of the suffering so shall you also of the consolation we're reading to 11 hurry up please for we would not brethren have you ignorant of our trouble listen which came to us in asia that we were pressed out of measure above strength in so much that we despaired even of life but we had the sentence of death in ourselves that we should not trust in ourselves but in God which raised the dead. Look at what they went through. Verse 10. Who delivered us from so great a death and doth deliver in whom we trust that he will deliver us. Last verse 11. Ye also helping together. How? That's why we were victorious ye also while we were going through those things in the mission field when they were about to kill us this is how you help ye also helping together by prayer for us so it was not just that we were mighty men of god there were times we were about facing death but ye also helped us by prayer next scripture very powerful scriptures that's why i'm reading them philippians chapter 1 14 to 19 please let's hurry up oh, just give us verse 19 really our time is gone but you can write this philippians 1 14 to 19 
scriptures that talk about the role of warfare and intercession verse 19 he says for i know i wish we could read from 14. he says for i know that this shall turn to my what how through your i know that the things that are happening around my life will eventually translate to salvation for me and that will happen through your prayer and the supply of the spirit of jesus christ next scripture isaiah 62 verse 6 to 7 the ministry of prayer the ministry of intercession and warfare cannot be overemphasized let's read it two verses i have set watchmen upon thy walls O jerusalem which shall never hold their peace day nor night ye that make mention of the lord he says keep not silence next verse and give him no rest until what happens until he establish until he makes jerusalem a place in the earth there are men who prayed jesus to come and are the prophetess there are people who pray the purposes of god to find expression hmm. let me give you two more scriptures romans chapter 10 verse 1 and then we look at first timothy 2 verse 1 to 5 quickly please romans chapter 10 verse 1 and then first timothy 2 verse 1 to 5 i'm giving you all these scriptures because i, I expect that you go back and sit down and thoroughly look at them it says brethren my heart's desire and prayer to god for israel is that they might be what was the content of my prayer they might be my heart desire for my family members and my prayer to god for them is that they might be last scripture is the grand scripture first timothy 2 verse 1 to 5 very powerful scriptures first timothy 2 1 to 5 i exhort therefore that first of all supplications prayers intercession and giving of thanks be made for how many people for all men right for kings and for all that are in authority that we may lead a quiet and a peaceable life in all godliness and honesty three reading down to five for this is good and acceptable in the sight of our savior who will have how many who will have so why do we intercede it is in god's desire that we not only pray for our churches but we pray for territories because his desire is that all men be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth last verse for there is one god there is one mediator between god and men the man christ jesus he desires that that man christ jesus be revealed and that will happen when prayer supplication giving of thanks be made for all men that god will save them the second way you participate in establishing the lordship of christ across the hearts of men the second way is through the ministry of direct soul winning through the ministry of direct soul winning matthew 9 37 to 38 let's have the following scriptures matthew 9 37 to 38 then we'll look at second timothy 4 verse 5 thank you jesus god is helping us matthew chapter 9 37 to 38 listen then said he to his disciples the harvest is truly what plenteous but the laborers are few next verse he says pray ye therefore that the lord of the harvest will send forth laborers that's the second dimension to be the laborer yourself the goers the ones who will make sure that they are participating actively talking to people if it means creating a blog 
if it means taking advantage of the social media if it means connecting people to the resources and the ministries and the platforms that will get them saved you are the goers second timothy 4 5 second timothy 4 5 it says but watch thou in all things endure afflictions and do the work of an evangelist you are not an evangelist but do the work of an evangelist fulfill your calling do the work of an evangelist don't say i'm not an evangelist i'm not called into the fivefold ministry no it says do the work of an evangelist john chapter 3 verse 7 very instructive verse jesus himself speaking i like you to read it it's projected one to read marvel not that i said unto you uh -huh, ye must be born again i make it mandatory for your eternal salvation and so there must be goers forceful write these other scriptures down we'll project only one more but i want you to write this colossians chapter 2 from verse 1 to 10 the verses of emphasis is verse 5 to 8 colossians chapter 2 from verse 1 to 10 then give us romans chapter 10 please verse 8 to 14 romans 10 8 to 14 quickly please romans 10 8 to 14 thank you but what saith it look up please the word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Nine, we are reading down. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, and shalt believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Read on. For with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. So it talks about salvation. Read what it says. For the scripture saith, whosoever believeth in him shall not be ashamed 12 for there is no difference between the jew and the greek for the same lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him so he's talking about calling upon him now then he says for whosoever shall call upon the name of the lord shall be now this is the problem 14 how then shall they call upon him whom they have not believed the people is not like they are rebellious but no one has told them no one has given them an opportunity it says how then shall they call upon him in whom they have not believed and how shall they believe in him of whom they have not heard then he says how shall they hear without a preacher there's got to be somebody who will take up that laborious responsibility to take the gospel to them very quickly the third key so that we will pray the third way you participate in establishing the lordship of god's kingdom in the hearts of men is to become a kingdom financier write it down so number one we see the ministry of warfare and intercession number two you are the goer number three a kingdom financier who is that they are the men and women who supply financial resources for soul winning financial resources for the gospel anyone who loves god and is interested in participating in building his kingdom and advancing the frontiers of his kingdom in the hearts of men god is giving you what to do there are so many people who are so idle in the body of christ and they say i've not discovered my purpose there is a mandate that is upon all of us an intercessor a goer you are a laborer and then a kingdom financier let's look at a few scriptures 
Luke chapter 5 please Luke chapter 5 verse 1 to 9 I found this scripture a few years ago and it blessed me I want you to pay attention pay close attention I want to share a few things that will really really bless you Luke chapter 5 is a long reading just follow me and it came to pass that as the people pressed upon him to hear the word of the Lord he stood by the lake of Gennesaret too and he saw two sheep standing by the lake take note but the fishermen were gone out of them and were washing their nets no miracle no salvation next verse and he entered into one of the ships which was Simon's and prayed him that he would thrust out a little from the land and he sat down and taught the people out of the ship yes please now when he had left speaking he said unto Simon that's the reward he gets now for donating his boat launch out into the deep listen please and let down your nets for a drought this is talking about fish but we are relating this to souls now okay verse 6 okay verse 5 and Simon answering listen he said master we have toiled all night and have taken nothing nevertheless at your word I will let down the net we are reading down to 11 and when they had this done they enclosed a what a great multitude of fish they were now winning souls and the ministry was expanding beyond their capacity now souls were coming but they needed a lot of help next verse and they beckon on their and they beckon on their they would have lost those souls because now there were more souls coming and they were holding more programs and the current financial level of the ministry could not take it and instead of losing the souls they called on certain people and he says which were in the other ship they called on to them come and help us so that we do not lose the souls and he says that they should come and help them and they came and filled both ships so that they even began to sink they called on their partners their net was about to break it would have been a wasted effort because now they do not have venue for prayer those who were born again did not have a venue for prayer so they called on Rema Chapel come to us as partners and give us a venue so that we can pray lest those that are saved be lost listen there are men and women and everybody in my opinion in my opinion should participate in supplying financial resources for soul winning for God's end time agenda you know this this thing about finances every time it is said most people and, and of course I know that there are people who have um, done a lot of different kinds of things but the truth remains and hear me please that one of the responsibility I said responsibility you don't have to say we are raising offering please Pastor Alpha come and give 10,000 Pastor Femi come and give 5,000 no it should be part the same way you tithe there should be a portion of your income that is designed to support the advancement of God's kingdom that is very very practiced in Islam right in fact it's part of the tenets they do it very very well that whenever you are rich you know it's been it's been a teaching that they grew up with that part of that resource should be committed in the building of you know um, 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 all of the, the structures that they raise and all of that When you read Acts chapter 4, don't turn there. Just write it down. Acts chapter 4, 32 to 37. The Bible says how that the early church, they had a culture. The Bible says there were people who sold their lands. There are people who sold certain things and brought the resources. It said none lacked among them. There was such flow of supplies. There was such flow of benevolence. Because many of them knew that part of their responsibilities were to supply financial resources. Zechariah chapter 1 verse 17a I'm giving you a few scriptures 
la paroto sukri ya jabana na manana ba. Zechariah chapter 1 verse 17a. It says cry yet saying thus saith the Lord of hosts my cities how shall they be spread abroad through prosperity shall they be spread abroad and I will yet comfort Zion and shall yet choose Jerusalem there is a place of financial supplies hear me please for the advancement of the kingdom and this is not a favor you know hold on please the way many believers the way many believers address this thing when they have a seed maybe to sow to a man of God or to a church the, the way they drag themselves and carry it and make it as if they are doing a favor do you know God is my witness I, I stand before the God of heaven and I lie not if you look at my financial statement God is my witness and I say this before the God of heaven whom I serve in the spirit more than 70% of my financial resources at this current level is distributed spread to the body of Christ for the advancement of the kingdom believe me I stand before God in heaven how much money can you use for yourself how much clothes can you buy this is not something that I started doing now it's been there when your heart is committed towards God because where your heart is there your treasure will be also committed for kingdom advancement there are many programs I don't uh, they are not directly my business the moment I hear about it I see what I can do to support it I'll never forget early this year there was a pastor very great man of God you know nice pastor somewhere and certain things happened and they were about to jam him and the people out of the venue and God was helping them I know this is a man that loves God and fears God and he called me he said man of God we're about to get embarrassed on Sunday there is no place of worship I said over my dead body not when I'm alive at least it's within my power how much is needed for this please send me your account details let me see what I can do and that man called me and was crying together with his wife they were both crying and say the Lord will bless you see kingdom investment is one of the greatest ways to be a businessman kingdom investment believe me when I tell you when done with a pure heart and done sincerely and out of love is a jackpot in the realm of wealth forget that the result may not look like it's coming immediately my goodness you will receive answers to prayers you did not pray kingdom investment as a lifestyle not something you do when some money just comes how can i have money that someone blesses me and the kingdom never participates in it no way and it's not because of koinonia no so you don't think it's just a bias just because i'm leading a ministry not at all I consider myself to be a proper kingdom financier there are many men of God who don't give they don't even sow to the work they are doing they don't they demand for money from anybody but they never give are we together how can I sit down I'm staying in a house of 20 million and they need a carpet of 1 million in the house of God no way no way no way no way no way see i'm showing you things that you do for the sake of the kingdom that will move the heart of god to vow certain vows i learned this i learned this attitude from david biome is a man who truly truly is a is a principality territorial principality when it comes to wealth and finances his pastors are the, about the highest paid they are more paid than bankers they live in an estate this is a church but it came through giving there are many of you let me talk to you I want, I'm, I'm not saying this I want to help you there are many of you 
when the offering basket is passing it's truly i say this not don't think i'm trying to manipulate you i fear god but let me tell you something i'll tell you why many of us never strike a chord and get the attention of god through our giving immediately after the grace you are going to eat buns outside of almost 500 naira and there are people you take 50 naira look at it squeeze it back take 20 naira oh it's the new one you squeeze it back you take out the old one and then you just say usha please come back and then you just drop it and do you know the painful part some of us are working class and you have not changed there are some amounts i cannot give god it's not pride it's the truth i will be wicked how much do i spend on eating please talk to me how much do i spend on eating if i'm wearing a watch of 10 naira and i'm giving god offering of of 20 kobo am i stupid won't i sell the watch or carry it and drop it in an offering basket there are things you do that moves the heart of god make it a culture that kingdom investment is part of my life whether or not there is a giving program find a need create an opportunity and solve it and watch the god of heaven arise for you the third way we participate there's a man dr paul and Enche gave the story one time i think he asked god to grant him grace he wanted to set up he owned different businesses but he wanted to set up one business specifically for the funding of the gospel and god answered his prayers and he set up the business in in hundreds of millions do you know 100 percentage me 100 percent of the profit 100 goes to the mission field that's an unkillable man i show you a man that no charm no charm can touch let me show you a scripture now we're going to pray very interesting scripture very very interesting scripture matthew 27 please matthew 27 from verse 62 we are reading down to chapter 28 verse 15 take notes please 27 verse 62 let me show you how satan wages war against the finances of believers because he understands the role of finances in advancing the kingdom ready this is the resurrection of jesus now the next day that followed the day of the preparation the chief priests and the pharisees came together unto pilate this is jesus being buried now and the chief priests and all the people who made sure he died next verse saying sir we remember that the deceiver you see the spirit of the antichrist because who is the deceiver in scripture satan now he's using a man to call jesus a name that only satan should be called the deceiver while he was yet alive said after three days i will rise again next verse command therefore that the sepulcher be made sure till the third day lest his disciples come by night and steal him away and say unto the people he is risen from the dead so that the last error shall be worse than the first next verse Pilate said unto them ye have a watch go your way and make it as sure as you can right so they went and made the sepulchre sure sealing the stone and setting a watch next chapter in the end of the sabbath as it began to down you know the first day of the week came mary magdalene and so on and so forth next verse please and behold there was a great earthquake for the angel of the lord descended from heaven and came and rolled the stone next verse we're reading down please hurry up next verse verse four for fear of him the keepers did shake those who were guarding the tomb i'm going somewhere just follow me and they became as dead verse five and the angel answered and said to the woman fear ye not for i know that you seek jesus which was crucified he is not here for he is risen now listen the whole fight is because of this remember they went to um, Pilate and said we do not want this statement he is risen so go and seal the place are we together now for he said come see the place where the lord lay seven and go quickly go quickly 
evangelize quickly. Are we together? Go and take this good news and tell people what has happened. For he is risen from the dead and behold, he goeth before you in Galilee. There shall ye see him. Lo, I have told you. Verse 8. Now listen. And they departed quickly from the sepulcher with fear and great joy and did wrong to bring his disciples word. Nine. Listen. As they went to tell his disciples, please follow me. Behold, Jesus met them saying, all hail. And they came and held him by the feet and worshipped him. Ten. Then said Jesus unto them, be not afraid. Go and tell my brethren that go to Galilee. And you know, they should go there and they shall see me. Next verse, please. Now, listen. When they were going, behold, some of the watch, those who were guarding, they came into the city and showed the chief priests all the things that were done. They went and said, ah, what you are trying to avoid has happened. Jesus has risen. Next verse. And when they were assembled with the elders, what happened? And taking counsel, they gave, please read it, they gave, they took finances and gave people to say Jesus did not resurrect. Next verse. And saying, his disciples came by night and stole him away. They gave them money and said, go and preach. That should be the message. It's true, we know he has resurrected, but we use money to silence the gospel. And if this come to the governor's ears, we will persuade him and we will secure you. You won't lose your job. Just make sure you, that anything you must do, Jesus is not alive. We have given you the money. And so they took the money and did as they were taught now listen to the, the, the dangerous statement that follows and because of the power of that money and their loyalty to it and this saying is commonly reported among the jews until today that's the role money played there are jews today that are doubting because somebody collected money how much more that you release your money and say let them hear Oh, they need a translator no problem we can pay for it there must be a translator who will speak in house and we will pay for it satan paid men to say jesus is not alive he's paying nollywood he's paying hollywood he's paying the illuminati he's paying musicians satan is still paying men to say jesus is not alive but there is a generation of kingdom financiers who know the purpose of wealth it's not just for buying cars and bragging and proving to people in the village they are men and women look let me tell you they will supply financial resources beyond imagination do you know when i see great ministries that i know are serving the lord in truth begging for money begging on tv if you can help us if you don't help us we'll shut out do you know how bad i feel you've heard me say it again there are television stations brothers and sisters that need only a million dollars and it will write off their budget for an annum. somebody this night is about to sleep with a billionaire by six o'clock tomorrow morning whether it's saturday or whenever they are crediting one million dollars to her account she's going to enjoy it for saying jesus did not resurrect that is the prayer point of a whole ministry as anointed as they are do you know part of my goal in life is to be extremely wealthy extremely wealthy and the reason is this i already have a catalog of ministries catalog catalog of ministries per month the same way you receive salary oh this is going to destiny makers international this is going to rema this is going to this this is going to capro this is going to this this is going to this ministry and you feel the joy and the excitement and you tell the devil i am paying to make sure your head is being stamped ah listen and then satan wants to kill you the anointing on your the recipient of your money will wake him in the night he will pray his heart out for you to remain do you know let me tell you sincerely i'm a very busy person but i found out subconsciously that there are people that when they call me i pick i'm serious it's not like i'm a biased person i just found out that it seemed like i place a lot of priority 
and I had to trace and I found out that they were either people who were dangerous givers to my life or the house of God whether I knew them or not it's a principle it's a principle finance God's business and watch him defend you God will stand and defend you see let me tell you anytime things are not going well in your life carry a seed and run to a house the house of God or a man of God and just go and drop it there I'm giving you a big secret you have silent I don't care what the challenge is it has died these are mysteries in the kingdom those who know how to trade the secrets of the kingdom stand through life you look let me tell you pastor you can stand you are quarter to die is all that is nonsense there are mysteries you engage in I show you one of the mysteries the house of God the house of God your money is about to finish take some of it and run to the house of God drop it there you are you are it's a covenant you are connecting the supply with the house of God I, this is what I do oh, oh, oh. Oh, oh, oh. victory belongs to Jesus victory belongs to him Oh, 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 victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him. Oh, 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 victory belongs to Jesus. The greatest attack you will ever get in your life will be in your finances make a vow to advance the kingdom and see all hell break loose satan will prefer a church where the healing anointing is flowing than where finances is flowing because every other thing you have you cannot share is yours your salvation yours the only thing you can share is your resources let me tell you i've shared the vision here but let me say it again one time very clear vision I don't know how many years maybe two three years ago i was praying seriously praying in the spirit and all of a sudden my eyes were open and my ceiling just disappeared there's a big tree just in front of my place and when i looked at it it was no longer a tree i saw a big the only way i can you know a spirit that the bible calls leviathan right that looks like a sea creature like um like a dinosaur these kinds of creatures now i saw it like that it was a huge the eyes, one of the eyes alone was like the size of my head. Two red eyes, angry. The tail was not, it was like a snake connected to it. The tail was another creature and had its own life by itself. And the creature was looking at me. I was looking at it. It was looking at me. And this is what it told me. It says, so you think you can release financial blessings for God's people, something like that. And that was it. I know these spirits they know me I've seen them that's why he will not give you the job because God already knows that you have vowed that 20% of your salary will go for the kingdom and the devil will fight to make sure you don't get the job and you say what is it about my job it's not about the job it's about the agenda that the job will support yeah that's why Satan frustrates people. That's why you enter that exam hall and then he tries to get you blank. It's not about the exam. Does Satan need your script? No. He's trying to frustrate you because he sees the destiny and sees what will be advanced there. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. You make up your mind that you are going to start giving. All of a sudden, you see the devil want to come up with all kinds of schemes. Listen. I preached last week's message as a word of hope for you because there is there is a rising church i guarantee you brothers and sisters not everybody is greedy again there are men who have vowed some of you here i know as you are looking at me you can give your last pin for the kingdom i know and such kinds of people there is going to be a transfer of wealth in 2007 i woke up under a very strong visionary encounter and i had four words audibly 
audibly massive kingdom wealth transfer the holy ghost spoke to me that there is coming a wealth transfer not just because preachers are saying it it's an agenda where he will make one person like a nation where people will build businesses and the profit is not for them they don't need the money it's just for the kingdom it's just for the kingdom you come and see somebody building a church and you say why are they stopping you come and look at cgc and say look look how much does it take you hear that they are they are putting a but there was a time benny Hinn was looking for over i think he spends about a million dollars per week that's his budget a million dollars about 450 million naira of nigerian currency on crusades and souls are you stupid to spend that much money just on souls no it's worth it brothers and sisters it's worth it it's worth it for as long as i live my money will preach it's not only my mouth my body will preach my mouth will preach my finances will preach and i i don't know how many of you want to join me but i'm on a project to stamp the gate of poverty territorially territorially i say it in the open and i say it in the public it will bring a lot of criticism a lot of things will happen but it is for his glory and for his kingdom when people are organizing programs and they sit down budgeting how much one million uh, how much do you have i have 10 naira how much do you have i have 250 thousand and everybody starts coercing one another big men in many churches have become the holy spirit because they are the only ones who dictate how many pastors have to depend on people the welfare of so many pastors is so terrible look at their wives that's why many of you don't want to marry men of god when a man of god comes say, i love the anointing but i, I don't love the state the, the persona is very discouraging that is changing say it's changing yeah. in the name of jesus it is changing i have seen books that should be written i have seen books that should go to territories do you know there are places in nigeria that they've not had the gospel i'm not talking of america in nigeria imagine if your finances was part i saw a picture i think on on, on the internet that touched me a little boy was on a scale almost dying uh, i think some of the in the, the the idp camps there and the child was dying they were barely feeding him with whatever i, do. I don't know what that was dying how much is it how much is it david was a man who loved god he sat down one day and said how can i be in a palace and there is no house for god he said lord i know that you inhabit the heavens you don't need a physical building however i cannot as a king sit down and there is no house for you i will arise and build a house for you god said you have shed too much blood i won't allow you he said no problem i'm still not offended i will gather the money let my son build it there are men and women who will do that there are men and women who will stand up and override budgets some of you god will empower you by january you come and say how much is the budget for bus transport from january till december just this is it just take it see greed nothing kills greed like giving in the house of god the cure for greed is not counseling the cure for greed is not saving the cure for greed is not doing business the cure for greed is doggedly pouring your resources if you perish you perish I cannot tell you how many times in my life the Lord has instructed me to empty my account empty zero 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 I don't mean zero 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 home and abroad what use is the money if his kingdom will not be advanced when you see God blessing certain people find out what they are doing no don't just say God is blessing them let me tell you one day I was reading scripture and a revelation came when i read the scripture i found out that the last treasurer jesus had was not very faithful and i said lord i suppose that there should be vacancy of treasurer make me one make me your treasurer you know who a treasurer is the money is not your own but you pass it around there will always be a portion for you but you pass it around a distribution channel may god make someone hear that 
your current love for money will never give you finances many people think the secret to kingdom prosperity is business investment all of this there is a place for that but let me tell you all those things are rubbish when your heart is not you must have a deal with god it's a covenant let me show you a scripture psalm 122 we're rounding up psalm 122 verse 9 give us an niv please psalm 122 verse 9 oh oh, 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 victory belongs to Jesus. Psalm 122, verse 9. Are you stuck, media? Okay, please just turn it so that we we'll hurry up. It says, For the sake of thy house, let me just quote it. I desire thy prosperity for the sake of thy house because of the house of the lord our god i will seek thy good give us an niv do you have niv if you don't that's all right niv says i will seek your prosperity so lord i'm looking for this money not just for a name for myself no brothers and sisters how many houses can you live in how many cars can you drive? No matter how greedy you are, this is all the stomach you have. Hmm. But the kingdom, but souls. If you like, buy any kind of designers, it's finite. It's finite. Do you know what made the rich man a fool? His wealth did not flow. His wealth stayed. Keeping money and sitting on it is absolute foolishness. It's a sign of fear and foolishness there is he that scattereth and yet increased there is he that withholdeth more than his meat and tends to poverty because of the house of the lord our god i will seek your prosperity seek your good romans chapter 10 i'm rounding up now verse 14 and 15 the scripture we read earlier on Romans chapter 10 how then I'm rounding up now shall they call upon him whom they have not believed so you have to pray that the forces that have blind their minds to believe be warded off and how shall they believe of whom they have not heard and how shall they hear without a preacher so you need a goer but the last dimension 15 how shall they preach except they be sponsored how shall they go except someone sends them as it is written how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things how shall the ministry be built except they be sent the gospel is free but the means to take it to the lost is very expensive brothers and sisters if i give you the running budget of koinonia per week many of you will be very surprised all of the things that happen per week alone you will not imagine but thank God for the means and the capacity. Please, just imagine for one minute that as we are standing right now, there are people outside to pay. And we are stranded. Do you know what will happen to me? As anointed as I've preached, as much as you have been blessed, because of the financial pressure on me, I will be forced to do something else. After preaching such a powerful message on souls, I will now say, Sam, please come out. Pastor Alpha, come out. And now try to twist your hand because I have a budget to meet. There are many men of God we call money mongers. They are not money mongers. The pressure of finances or ministry can make you sick. So when you are blessed, you are here seated. There's light. The sound system is working well. Everything after service you are going. There's security standing. Everything is paid for. You know, the devil designed this system such that there's no free thing everything is paid for so that you will be limited but somebody shout the devil is a liar 
shout it the devil is a liar it's because of lack of finances that some of your loved ones have gotten into things you cannot believe are we together it's because of there are some of you you are destined to marry a man of god god has already shown you but the day you went to go and meet your father your father said you are stupid there are business people all over his pastor you can go and bring and it's because of finances if you were blessed will he ask that kind of question if you you were blessed will you ask that kind of question brothers i prophesy to you in the name of jesus the grace that helps men to rise financially so that you can focus on more important things may it come on your life in jesus name listen it's a cause to spend your life working for money look up i want to talk to you i'm rounding up it's a cause i say it again to spend your life living from hand to mouth you will never have the time to advance the kingdom so satan make sure you have just enough most of the problems in families are money problems brothers and sisters who are talking of money with an assignment not all this money mongering thing i want to buy a car of one million dollars all that is unnecessary but that you come to a point where the only limitation in your life and ministry is the voice of the holy spirit not finances so for those of you who have been thinking every time you hear people talk of this finance no 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 please don't be carnal don't be carnal be discerning the kingdom of god has suffered more casualties as a result of lack of finances than it has as a result of demon spirit satan paid men and women our daughters are going around marrying all kinds of godless people simply because they have money there are many brothers here who are anointed their marriage will represent the continuity of the kingdom of god but the financial wherewithal is not there they love god but they do not have the resources that they can stand with the parents and because we live in a very carnal generation everybody wants show me where is the car he came with where is the bungalow he lives in so it's corrupting the purposes of god they now go and carry one senseless person who does not have any kingdom the spiritual compass in his head is not working completely zero alignment and they join you because of money it's a cost to live for this it's a cost that the primary assignment of your life will be to chase and look for this that's an assignment god did not give you that's an assignment god did not give anyone are you hearing what i'm saying my father is alive my mother is alive by the grace of god i say it in the open i bless them all the time and every time and they are happy i've seen peace in my family not just by fasting and prayers they are all retired there's nothing for them to do they pray for me they speak over my life i've had the privilege of of helping in ways little i have seen people smile through school because of the financial resources that came i've seen people move from scratch to where god will take them being blessed for the kingdom is real blessing I don't care what you are doing i don't care how much you are making if you cannot show me how the kingdom is benefiting from it you are wasting god's time we are going to pray rise up on your feet victory belongs to him oh, oh, oh your life is changing oh, oh, oh. Jesus, victory belongs. Sing it from your heart. Oh, 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 oh. oh, 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 oh. victory belongs. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. victory belongs to Jesus. your voice in one minute and say lord for as long as there is breath in my nostrils your kingdom must advance lift your voice and pray lift your voice and pray 
for as long as there is bread in my nostrils I'm a kingdom advancer I'm a kingdom advancer I pledge allegiance I rededicate my life I rededicate my days I rededicate my influence for the advancement of your kingdom victory belongs to Jesus are you praying? I pour my life as a drink offering. I pour my life as a drink offering. I pour my life as a drink offering for your kingdom, for your glory. Revelations 11 verse 15 We are praying very quickly We are rounding up now Please I want you to participate in the prayer Can you help us media is that possible Quickly please Revelations 11 15 That's the theme of koinonia It's part of the core scriptures The anchor scriptures of this ministry I want you to read it. One to read. And the seventh angel sounded, and there were voices in heaven saying, Because of us, hold on, because of my giving, because of my going, because of my praying, the kingdoms of this world is a prophecy that must happen. I become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever because of my seed he shall reign because of my going he shall reign i live listen the 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 what do they call it when you put on your phone just that thing that comes when you see mine it says a kingdom ambassador promoting god's agenda that is all i live for now if i am not doing that now there is no reason to live believe me the reason why I breathe now is to see the nations call him king of kings and I will do all it takes with the breath I have in life and in death to see that his glory is revealed I want you to pray and say father grace for warfare and intercession for souls grace for warfare and intercession for territories are you praying lift your voice and pray point number two father the courage and the zeal to talk to people about Jesus to invite them to the house of the Lord to follow up their establishment I receive it lift your voice and pray the harvest is wide the harvest is wide in Zaria the harvest is wide in your campuses the harvest is wide on the streets the harvest is wide among the old, among the young, among the children. The harvest is wide, but the laborers, intentional laborers are few. Lord, I will not be silent. Lord, I will not be silent. I make my roommates the next project. I make my roommates the next project. I make my colleague in office the next project. I make my father, my mother, the next project of salvation. I will talk to them about Jesus. They will not die and go to hell. Hallelujah. 
the last prayer point I want you to pray this passionately with all your heart and say father trust me with the resources of heaven and I vow that I will be your treasure on earth lift your voice and pray come on pray make a covenant with God Lord trust me supernatural resources trust me with the wealth of the kingdom trust me prosperity in the kingdom is not an achievement no you are trusted you are trusted yeah. hallelujah listen a few years ago the lord spoke to me and said to me he said son if you will let men see me there is nothing i will not give you i want you to pray and say lord the resources to fund your kingdom pass it through me lift your voice and pray god will answer it i assure you the kingdom is tied to it god will answer it I'm not talking salary. I'm not talking business. The mystery of divine supply. your hands in the name of Jesus Christ the spirit of prayer warfare and supplication the grace that helps men travel for souls travel for territories to be open receive that grace now in the name of Jesus receive that grace right now in the name of Jesus I release it upon you from today fresh grace for prayer in the name of Jesus I pray for you every spirit of timidity every lukewarm spirit that does not make God a priority in your life and doesn't make so winning a passion I tear that spirit from your life forever in the name of Jesus and I pray in the name of Jesus that beginning from now if you don't win souls it will be as if you have not eaten in the name of Jesus Christ and finally I pray for you because your heart is tied to funding the agenda of the kingdom I pray for you the grace that helps men to be wealthy the grace for wealth there is an anointing for it in the name that is above all names i pray for you may that mantle come on you right now i release upon you that grace let your financial life change right now let it change like day and night i prophesy to you wisdom strategy grace to walk in obedience the giving grace grace to love the house of god grace for kingdom investment the giving grace receive it in jesus name i pray for you finally every delayed harvest from any giving you have given in the house of god but your harvest is being tied down I stand in the name of Jesus and I prophesy to that harvest so that you will have more to give I command it to come to you speedily I command your harvest speedily I command your harvest speedily you're here tonight outside everybody stand please no movement you are here 
and you are yet to make Jesus Lord I tell you mantles are falling this thing worked in the spirit things are falling let's just let God do what he's doing but I'll make an altar call while that is happening there are people receiving grace this last prayer point I prayed struck a chord in the realm of the spirit there are people having things you are only a victim of what you do not have there are things that can come upon your life and change your life like day and night bless him for new dimensions bless him bless him lift your hands and thank him for 2015 oh we bless you thank him for the testimonies thank him for deliverances thank him for breakthroughs thank him for the awesome things he's doing and that which he will do tonight just 15 days into the new year and he's proven himself mighty today is the 16th and we already are recording mighty testimonies of his faithfulness Lord we thank you Malabos shata brada gada balabos Speak to us tonight Speak to us tonight By the power of the Holy Spirit Hallelujah Hallelujah Father we bless you we really give you praise. As individuals and as a family of faith, we thank you for the privilege of 2015 and the confidence that we have. We bless you for preservation. We thank you for your faithfulness because we can count on you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we have come. We ask that you will do something mighty tonight. Open our eyes. It's a new season. Bring us into dimensions we never dreamt possible. And Lord, we pray that what you will do this year will dwarf everything, all the years combined. We have come with our hearts open. And Father, we really ask that you help us. In the mighty name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Good to see us. God bless you. Walk around to 10, 15 people. Just tell them it's good to see you again. Those outside, we are with you. Make sure you participate. Hallelujah. chapter 6. Tonight is a prayer meeting. I'll just be opening us up to the prophetic word for the year. 
First and foremost, I'd like us to understand that one of the things that we fight radically in this place is religion and the traditions of men. We never do things because they are the popular things to be done. Praise the Lord. I want you to know that the giving of prophetic words um, is not just some kind of um, church thing by leaders, you know, to be able to, let's say, our church or our ministry has this and that. No. It's, it's a communication of God's intent for a people and a territory. Hallelujah. To the end that when they understand God's program and the way he's working. Now, I've had a lot of people in a bid to balance the abuse of prophetic words have condemned everything and said there's no need for prophetic words. When you understand, you see, that, that is the reason why it is important for us to understand the operation of the kingdom. Hallelujah. The operation of the kingdom defines the scope of the way God does his things. When you know God and you understand the system of the kingdom, then you will know why certain things are necessary. Praise the Lord. If you try to just copy, you may not be able to communicate the light that comes from that revelation. But when it is born out of a depth of understanding, then you will be able to guide people and they will receive breakthroughs in their lives. Are you following me now? And, and the Bible says God made many stars. Have you read that in Genesis? Right? And part of the ministry of those stars is that as the constellations over the earth, they are supposed to help men understand signs and seasons. Praise the Lord. Is that all the volume, please? Um, so if you understand that God made constellations to guide us into understanding times and seasons, that should tell you that the program of God is very specific and very seasonal. Are you getting my point? God does not just do anything, anytime. No, no, not at all. Although he dwells in the realm of eternity, right? When it comes to operating the principles of his kingdom here on earth, he subscribed to times and seasons. And so when the prophet will speak to the woman, he say, according to the time of life, Hallelujah. The Bible says he shall be like a tree that is planted by the streams of water which yields its fruit. When? In season. So there is a season. Praise the Lord. And it is important. One of the many things that happens when a season comes is that the graces, the mantles, the understandings and the, the communications of the spirit that will guide people into walking in sync with the program of God for that season is communicated to them. And let me tell you something. The hallmark of the apostolic ministry is not signs and wonders. You see, the apostolic ministry is a dispensational ministry. The true proof of an apostolic ministry is the ability to, number one, understand seasons. Number two, understand the communications and the revelation that is released to guide men into exploring that season. And then number three, to sustain the utterance in the spirit to interpret those mysteries so that the people of God can both understand, receive, and walk in light of what God is doing. Are you following me now? And so we must be able to understand. The Bible says wise men, they looked at the stars and suddenly they found out that one star was bright. And they knew it was not just a coincidence. Are you following me now? And on the strength of that spiritual advantage, they began to explore. And it took them around a manger. And so prophetic words are not just um, words that must happen January to December. And again, I've had a lot of people talk about January to December and say that it is not, maybe it doesn't make any spiritual sense. You see, when I hear talks like this, I, I don't feel bad for the people that communicate these things. 
is only an expression of our deficiency of understanding spiritual things. Because if your journey to explore God starts from the Old Testament, you are lagging behind seriously. Your understanding of God must predate the Old Testament so that it gives you an opportunity to see the consistency of his character through many dispensations. The word eternity means the summation of infinite dispensations. Are you following me now? please? And so it means that our dispensation is only in the middle of many dispensations that have gone before us and many to come after us. Is that true? But then the Bible gives us a picture of the consistency of the operation of the kingdom in the midst of these dispensations. For instance, there was a dispensation where the one we call Satan or Lucifer did not exist. Did you know that? Is that true? There was a dispensation where the earth was not a factor. Is that true? When you read the communications of Job, when he invoked God in chapter 38, he said, guard up thy loins as, as, a, as a man and I will demand of thee. He said, where was thou when I founded the earth? Tell me if you know. Were you there when I laid its foundation? When I put the cornerstone? He said, when the morning stars sang together and the sons of God rejoiced. So you see that the concept of sons of God is not a New Testament concept. Our understanding about God and the kingdom must predate Genesis 1, predate Old Testament. So that it no longer becomes just an argument between Old Testament and New Testament. You are exploring the consistency of a being that has manipulated things according to his wisdom from infinite dispensations past. The earth, as we know, our dispensation is barely six or seven thousand years. But we carbon date rocks and we see that some are as far as 50,000 years. Is that true? That means there is an old story. And if we do not understand this operation of God, we will find ourselves violating his system. And part of my personal pursuit during my retreat, I was telling the Lord that one of the things that I trust that God will use me to bring to this house is accuracy of alignment. That we will truly gain mastery in the understanding of the principles of the kingdom and then it will make us to reign truly and experientially and so the prophetic word is god's program of guidance for for ministries for territories it's important for us to understand the language of god he speaks um dimensionally in fact he acts dimensionally it is the dimensional character of God that gave birth to his names. All the names of God represent dimensions and they, they also represent progressions of understanding him. So every dispensation is supposed to give God a name and that name represents the scope of their experience with him. The names of God as we know so far represent his dealings and his revelations, the unveilings of himself across many dispensations. So while we lean on the strength of those revelations to gain access to who he really is, there is a lot more that he wants to reveal to us. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 1 verse 26 before we come to Hosea. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Lord, we thank you for light. We thank you for light. Thank you for light. Genesis 1, verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our own image and after our likeness. And let them have dominion upon over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over the cattle and over all the earth and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. 27. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him. Male and female created he them. Hallelujah. Genesis chapter 2 from verse 7 please. I'm just trying to establish a few things that will lead us to understanding the theme and then we'll pray. Are we there? Verse 7. Okay, it's projected. I think many of us can follow as many as possible. 
and the Lord God did what? Formed man out of the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and man became a living soul. There's something I want to pick out here. When the Bible says God formed man from the dust of the earth. Now, Adam was not just the name of that man. Hallelujah. When the Bible says God formed man, that the name of that formation itself is Adam. Are you getting my point now? Now, it said God made man from the earth, the dust of the earth. Now, there is a mystery there that I want you to understand. It doesn't just mean God used clay to make man. Are you getting what I'm saying? Because according to ecology as we know, right? You will not be able to dwell in a system if you cannot relate with that environment. Is that true? So God made the spirit of man. But when it, come, it, it, it came to forming the body of man, the Bible says God made man, Adam. What, what it meant was that God used the raw materials of the system to fabricate the body of man. Are you getting my point? So that it will grant him the opportunity to be able to relate freely in this realm. The biological components of man, the psychological components of man were created from the materials within his environment. Are, are you following me now? Praise the Lord. So that there is a consistent interaction between the man, Adam, and the environment. And five elements work together to create man. Number one, light. Number two, wind. Number three, water. Number four, earth. Just follow me. What's number one? Number two? Number three? Number four? Number five? Sound. Please just follow me. I want to establish something. Open our eyes in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, these five elements, as we know, look up, please. They are the five elements that govern the interaction of man and his system. Are you following me now? Light, the earth, the food that we eat comes from where? Is that true? The water we drink, without water, you know that we will die. Meaning there is a relationship between the waters and the body of man. Is that true, please? The light sunlight as we know you know that without light there is no life is that true and then sound sound physics has gone so far to tell us a lot of the implication of sound it has been established that we live in a planet that is governed by sound sound hallelujah business people have postulated theories to be able to let us know that your thoughts produce sound that your light produces sound and it takes sound to be able to communicate and all of that. You are listening to me upon the strength of sound. We all know this just to be physics, but I am telling you that all these elements were not of this realm. They were imported to help man become compatible. Just follow me. This is the reason why the description of the Holy Spirit in the Bible has been in the similitude of these elements. Are you getting what I'm saying now? And so when the Bible says God made man, what it means is that in the making of this body called Adam, these elements are found. That's why we drink water. Is that true? That's why we need light to see. You cannot see in darkness. You need light to see. You need sound to hear and do a lot of other things. We need the earth to be able to plant our crops. Mysteries. You open the ground and throw a seed and close it. And don't supervise it. You don't need a remote control. Something begins to happen that we cannot explain. Brothers and sisters, imagine the mystery of this earth. 
Is it living? You throw a seed. The earth has the resurrection power in it. You throw a seed and the Bible tells us that that seed dies. The earth without prayer brings it back to life. I'm showing you the elements of creation. Without prayer, no man can manipulate the earth. No matter your fight, you cannot be angry with the earth. Because it is spiritual. Number two, fire or light. Let's just call it light, really. But you can put light stroke fire. You cannot box light or box fire. You cannot monopolize it. You cannot do anything. It's an entity that is strange. It is not scared of anything, yet it threatens everything. Spiritual elements. Number three, water. A great mystery. Great mystery. You can't hold it, yet it has weight. Heavier than anything. Mysteries that surround our world that many of us may never get to really understand and appreciate. We see it all the time. What is the relationship between your body and water? Brothers and sisters, animals take water. Plants take water. Hallelujah. Meet a man who is dying of thirst. Give him water and he's rejuvenated. What does it do to him? It's more than biology. It's more than biology. Hallelujah. And then another mystery is even how the rain falls. Hallelujah. That vapor rises without the eyes of man seeing, condenses in the atmosphere, purest form by itself, distills itself, and begins to empty itself upon the earth. Mysteries that surround our world. And the Bible says man was made of these elements. Meaning, if you corrupt any of these elements, it will translate into the corruption of man. Are you getting what I'm saying? You now see the reason why demonic spirits use these five elements for their operation. Satan is called the prince of the power of what? That's wind. Is that true? We see the Holy Spirit manifesting as the wind. We see the Holy Spirit manifesting as water. We see the Holy Spirit manifesting as light or fire. Now, I, I'm just helping you to appreciate the fact that it's not just that we, we stumbled across these things and we found them being used in scripture. They are, in, they are not the only elements. Are you following me now? It is only because they are the elements that are important for the existence and the functionality of man. There are many other elements. But we know those five. Just like we have five senses. Is that true? But those are not the only senses. Now I know that people have taught great men like Papa Hagen and the rest. They've written books and they've said we also have spiritual, five spiritual senses. Of course you can look at the level and the, the, the dispensation with which he wrote those revelations. But now we know better. It cannot be that there are five senses. There are senses as infinite as the wisdom of God. That's why you can receive certain communications of the spirit that you cannot explain physically because the, the equivalent sense to help you interpret it is deficient. Are you getting what I'm saying now? God made man to interact with these things. So when I drink water, when I walk with the earth, when I take advantage of the illumination from light, right? and I, 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 I walk with these elements they sustain my health they sustain my vitality and they help me to function in the earth and it so happens that these elements because they were imported from the spirit when the Holy Ghost begins to function with this man Adam he also comes in the similitude of these elements are you getting what I'm saying? So he can manifest as light or fire. When he manifests as fire, it's a revelation of his dimension to be able to achieve certain things. When he manifests as wind or sound, it says that I prophesied as I was commanded and there was 
a sound. Acts chapter 2, when the Holy Ghost was coming, a mighty sound, a rushing wind. Right? And so we see these operations of the Spirit. The prophet said, O oh wind, breathe upon this slain. And the Bible says the wind came and entered them. And suddenly, the flesh, the sinews that came, came from the earth. I will cause sinews to come and cover the bones. Are you following me now? And so the manifestation of the Holy Spirit is in the similitude of these elements. That's why when you go to a herbalist, he will still use these five elements to concoct everything because he's working with man. Is that true? When you go, I've, I've, I've taught us already, but then let me just share it. The principle of reflection, we call it that everything in creation should reflect its maker. Is that true? And because man is the hallmark of God's creation, everything in creation should be reflected in man. Is that true? And so I told you that the eyes of man was made from what? Water. Right? The similitude of vision. The same way that you go to a herbalist and it does incantations on water and suddenly that water becomes an eye and it starts seeing through it right i told you that the hair of man was made in the similitude of grass is that true that's why you can barb it and everything you know that similitude the veins of man were made in the similitude of roots of plants is that true the bones of man was made in the similitude of stones that's why they can stay long even after just like the stones are you getting what i'm saying the body of man this flesh was made from the earth that's why it is compatible with the earth when men die where do we bury them not in the sky we don't just hang them somewhere in the sky is that true we bury them he said for dust thou art and to dust thou shall return is that true that means you are dust so when the holy spirit begins to function he functions in these dimensions watch this notice the coexistence of wind light water and all of this to keep you alive can you choose water and say there's no need for light is that true you need all of these dimensions now that's how it is spiritually every season because rea realize that god is building another spiritual man is that true he says we all as living stones there is a spiritual house god is attempting to build and the name of that house when completed is called the bride of christ in her perfection god is walking molding he said my little children of whom i travel until christ be formed in you like an architect trying to build a mystery using the bride to make a bride that bride that is spotless and so based on that creation god is using us and forming every element that needs to be in us so that as a church we can be presented as that apostolic bride are you following me tonight so the holy spirit reveals himself in different dimension after the similitude of these elements of creation and every one of his dimensions comes to initiate an understanding about God and to initiate a certain kind of function just like water water does not just do what light does water does not just do what wind does but without wind water cannot move is that true There's, there, there is a coexistence when I began to seek the Lord this year and for the prophetic word he said i will reveal myself to my people as the rain the rain not just water the rain that caught my attention for me i was very very excited very very excited because i know a bit about water and i i have studied a bit but when the lord began to give me that word i braced up i was excited I received it into my spirit and very briefly I will just share with you certain things that will help us to align with the prophetic word of God. Hosea chapter 6 please from verse 1 to 3. 
Hosea chapter 6. Come and let us return unto the Lord. For he hath torn and he will heal us. He hath smitten and he will bind us up. Verse 2. After two days he will revive us. In the third day he will raise us up and we shall live in his sight. Verse 3, I want us to read it together. One, to read. And he shall come to us as how? Hold on. He said, and he shall come to us. Meaning this is how he has chosen to reveal himself. To make himself manifest in the midst of his people not a rain it says and he shall come to us as the rain a combination of the former rain and the latter rain now i don't want to go into the whole theology of the arguments about former rain um latter rain and all of that that's not our point of interest tonight but it's just for us to know that god wants to come and manifest himself this year 2015 as the rain the rain the rain what then is this rain very quickly what is the rain really i wrote a few things here and i'll just read them out so that we can have some notes the rain is a dimension of the outpouring of the spirit the rain is a dimension of the outpouring of the holy spirit upon people and territories That is responsible for activating certain spiritual realities. The rain is a dimension of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit. Upon people and upon territories. Responsible for activating certain spiritual realities. There are different spiritual realities because every dimension of the holy spirit helps you to access certain dimensions hallelujah when the holy spirit is revealed as fire there is a dimension of him that we can access on the strength of that revelation when he's revealed as rain or water or dew or whatever it is in that similitude when the holy spirit is revealed as oil when he's revealed as a dove, when he's revealed as all of these things, they all attempt to communicate certain dimensions of his operation and dimensions that can be accessible. Hallelujah. There are seven, seven dimensions or expectations I want us to have as the Holy Spirit reveals himself as the rain. Seven things happen in the life of any man and any territory when the holy spirit is permitted to reveal himself as the rain we'll just run through it very quickly number one when the holy spirit reveals himself to a people as the rain there is an unusual dimension of soul winning unusual dimension of soul winning because harvest is tied to rain Harvest is tied to rain. Hmm. Harvest is always tied to rain. He said in Isaiah chapter 32 from verse 15, he says, until the spirit be poured upon us. So he uses the language of the rain. Until the spirit be poured upon us from on high. And then the wilderness will be counted for a fruitful vine. And then that vine will multiply and become a forest so one of the things that happens to a people or a territory when the holy ghost begins to manifest as the rain is that there are unusual dimensions of soul winning and transformations transformation we had our brother who came here and shared how that he had never seen me i don't know how, how probably without exaggeration thousands of people who say I have never seen you most people outside of this circle have seen me in either dreams or visions you see that the rain unusual dimension of soul winning and so that's one of the things we expect to see this year that there will be unusual dimensions 
that rain will pour on people. You see, when the rain begins to pour, it does not select who to fall on. Is that true? When it falls, it falls upon everyone and you must carry a trace of it. It will wet anybody. It will wet any car. That's the dimension of the spirit. So he will fall on unusual people. He will fall on business people. He will fall on students. He will fall on workers, unbelievers. Had, you will see hardened criminals come to Christ. People who vowed by themselves, God forbid, over my dead body to be born again. You will see them come mysteriously. And then you will know that the rain fell on them. Hallelujah. People who hitherto have refused to accept Jesus Christ. You will argue with them. They will say, look, if, if Jesus is real, why are pastors this? You know, all those, all those arguments they bring. You will see them walk in dimensions. I tell you, you three o'clock, you will see them come to stand at Koinonia. Shaking, they cannot explain what brought them. The moment you see that, know that it is the rain. Because every time a rain will fall, you will see clouds. There is a sign. There is a rain. And that rain will fall. It will bring... I'm not talking of salvation of one leg here today and two legs out. You say, I had it. No, 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 no. Genuine that all your legs will be stationed and established in the kingdom. That's why I said so winning and transformation. You know, I've questioned a lot of what people call born again. Right? If you truly meet with this rain, there must be transformation. Hallelujah. All of those kinds of what I used to do before, I'm still doing it again after 10 years. I'm, you did not meet with the Holy Spirit. If you truly meet with the Spirit of the living God, the Spirit of the living... A donkey met with him and started talking. No rehearsals. Look, let me tell you, if the Holy Ghost meets with you, something must change. It has nothing to do with whether you have faith or not. There is an imprint. When rain comes, it does not ask you what kind of material. You live and there is an evidence. Have you seen rain come and then there is a nice lady who is wearing, um, what they call it, those you people's dangerous shoes that, that is pointed, you know, and she's trying to just run. The rain is whipping her. No regard for whatever she, whether it's with one or your natural hair or whatever hair, whether rain just comes lord send that avalanche we are tired of discussing with certain family members that will not change in this season of the rain mm. the moment he's kicking the car the car will not kick again and the only he can't open the door and he will hear a voice and he will say how long will you keep running away from me personal salvation genuine personal salvation i want you to believe look let me tell you there are seven things this is number one but this is major every one of us must participate cooperating with this rain because when when rain falls there are certain people who can how many of you have seen rain fall and then some people bend their zinc strategically to make sure that water enters some vessels that's how some of us will be. You will say, this rain is almost reaching my uncle. Oh Lord, where is that zinc? You must tilt it to touch him. Oh no, look, let me tell you. There will be massive salvation this year. It's called anakazo. A compelling evangelism. Not, not too much of drama and they are asking you, did you quote it correctly? Do you know that? That means you are not a serious believer. And then what would have been a, a simple encounter becomes three hours of foolish argument. The Bible calls it vain talk. Right? You keep arguing whether is this and that. Should this person do this? Does your church do this? When the rain comes. When the rain comes. Some of you, all you will need to tell somebody is come. Jesus looked at them and said, come. No argument. That's how they got up. Because that rain comes with it a dimension of the spirit. Do you believe that? Number two. When the rain comes, we will experience increased dimension of love for God and passion for spiritual things listen to me 
every time rainy season comes it supplies energy upon the farmer to go to the farm is that true when he sees the rain he's excited when the rain falls every one of us every one of us must fall in love with god it comes it's a dimension of the holy spirit that all of a sudden makes jesus become a priority in your life so it's not just the issue of being fanatical he emphasizes the priority of the things of the kingdom the house of god evangelism prayer your your passion for spiritual things come alive Jesus must become a priority in our lives this year. Not an option. Many of us love the Lord, but there are many distractions. Jesus is not a priority to many of us. But this year, this season of the rain. Hallelujah. Listen, listen. Let me tell you one of the things that the rain does. The rain washes away filth. There are many things that have covered our eyes and our lives that would stop. Some of us love God, but there is a devil seated on our face called our mouth that will not allow us to serve God well. Are you getting what I'm saying? Your spirit wants to serve God, but your mouth, this mouth is, is, is an empire, is Babylon seated on your face. And if you don't tame it, let the rain wash away that thing, that field. There are many of us, our lives, this is the year when you say, Lord, let this rain come. Passion. During my retreat, I said, Lord, I really want to love you. I don't want to fake it. I know that I love you. You know, people send me a text and say, may God give me one tenth of your love for God. I said, really? You've not seen anything yet. Madly in love. For some of you, may God give you the kind of love you have for women. May God convert it to be love for him. In the name of Jesus Christ. In 2015, may it happen. No, we're here to enforce it tonight. Because, see, the way many of us love things that are not God. Money. Reputation women men intellect now i'm not against all of those things but i am telling you remember part of the things we do here is to make sure we strangle every idol to death there is only one that deserves our praise we will lay down our idols and thrones we have made and all that has taken my heart lord i will bow i will bow to you to no other God but you listen can i tell you one strategy of the devil one strategy of the devil to to filter or draw away our love and passion for God is activities. Say activities. That was the strategy Pharaoh used. When Moses was coming to connect them back to God, Pharaoh said, ah, it's because you are free. I've not occupied you enough. That's why you even have time to consider an exodus. He said, occupy them. What I was giving them free, let them look for it. And that's one thing that the devil is using to destroy our generation. Ask an average young man, why are you busy like this? Four o'clock, you are awake. Sorry, I don't have time. Ba -ba -ba -ba, Lord, I thank you. You are, I mean, if you were not alive, I wouldn't have woken up. Now that I'm awake, I really thank you. And you're on your way moving. We are on the go. We have fast food. If you are hungry, enter quickly. Five minutes, you are out. This kind of life will never produce passionate people. There must come a time in your life where you must define who is worth your time. Ha! You've won my heart, oh God. You've won my heart. Don't let Nigeria fool you. You are not the first to be successful. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I 
Ask Abraham. Ask Isaac. Ask Solomon. These were men who pursued God. But with that pursuit, they were successful. Take away that useless theology that the devil has given Nigerians. That if you don't get up and hustle and push, if one door closes, force another one to open. What do we call it? Hustling. In this year of the rain, may God help you to know what matters. You have only 24 hours. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I hunger and thirst for you in a dry and weary land. All I want is you. There are many of us, we don't care about the house of God. The, the house of God, come for koinonia. Eh, oh yeah, let me just drag myself and come, you know. And you come and you are waiting for everybody to tell you thank you. This is the year you tell that devil, if you, if you took advantage of my life in 2014, in this year, I mean business with God. Hallelujah. This is the year to throw away that small jotter that fire has burned half of it and buy a good hardcover exercise book and say, Lord, I mean business. Look, let me tell you, brothers and sisters. It says, after two days, he will revive us. And on the third day, he will raise us up. This was my cry during the retreat. I said, Lord, I don't love you enough. I searched my life to find out all the things that are still in the remaining time. And I said, Lord, I will give you time more. Because intimacy is a function of time. It's not just about quoting koinonia. Intimacy is highly time dependent. For the more I know you, the more I want to know you, Jesus, more of you. Spend time. In this season of the rain, many of you, let me tell you, you will find out 4 o'clock, 4.30, the Holy Ghost will wake you. Mm, sleep goes away. No matter the tiredness, you know that is the season of the rain. And you get up and play worship songs. I want more of you. Some of you, this season of the rain will take you back to what you used to do that brought grace upon your life. That you have thrown away. There are some of us here, especially the ladies, you know what you used to do. When it was not the issue of men. Huh? When it was not the issue of beauty. Before you rediscovered yourself, that depth of passion. Some of us don't wake up in the morning again. You sleep by 8 o'clock, you wake up by 9 o'clock. Spiritual carelessness. You don't care. You don't pray for two weeks. It's none of your business. You check the way you drop your note on your Bible last Koinonia Friday. That's how you pick it next Koinonia. Just say, Lord, I thank you. Speak to me. Look, it must change in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Let there be passion passion. Some of us were lights to our roommates. Right now, they are the ones advising you. Huh? Look at how spiritual drought came and stole your fervency. But no more. I said no more. In this season of the rain. Ah, cold. It's too cold. I can't serve God. Or the trouser I wanted to wear is not there. I wore blue last week blue this week. I can't go for koinonia. You are not serious. When this rain pours on you, you will pick up that trouser and wear. And say, whether, whether it's blue or black, I want more of you. Priorities that will change. Your priorities must change. You went to make your hair. They made half. They've not made the other half. Carry cap and cover it. Come for koinonia. See, Ask people and know the silly reasons why they refuse to come to the house of God. Very silly reasons. Someone say, I don't have transport. But let the guy say, oh yeah, come, let's talk. You, you, there is energy. Or, well, or the lady says, okay, I'm waiting for you at 90s. See the guy say, I'm coming. When he was talking, it was around dark. But you will be walking. Lord, I receive strength. I cover ground. 
and you cannot come to the house of God. In this year, 2015, may God give us passion. Oh, let, let this rain come and let people see the difference between them and God in your life. Are you getting my point? Let the guy know you love him, but when he comes to God, he's truly secondary without apology. What, if you put anything and God, don't even ask me which one. Anything that is not God has lost, including myself. If I'm secondary to God, what makes you think you will be primary? More of you. More of you. More of you. Jesus, more. Sing more of you. Sing more of you. Sing more of you. Jesus, more of you. Jesus, more of you. Yes. It's called an awakening. The Bible says, Awake thou that sleepest, and Christ will give you light. Please, you need to talk to your neighbor. Say, Wake up this year. Reignite your passion for God. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Sit down five minutes prayer. Oh Lord, I thank you. No, 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 no. You have to give God time. You have to give God time. Say, I will give God time. He will become a priority in my life. Yes. Nothing else matters. Look, let me tell you something. I was talking with my auntie. She lost her, her son, eldest son, the one who would, you know, be the next of kin. And when I went to her, um, when she heard I was in ministry, in her mind she said, ah, this young man, according to her, said this young man, so intelligent. You mean that's what you really want to do with your life? You know, people make it look like, ah, you mean this is it? Now, but when her son died, when I went to her, she said, if I knew, I would have served God like you in the days of my youth. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you something. Whether you believe in immortality or not, we are not going to be here forever. Just settle that in your mind. Is that true? Jesus said, I must walk the works of him. Five minutes without breathing, nobody will ask you all the PhDs you got. Are you aware of that? Nobody will ask you what your CGPA was. Please let me remind you. Nobody will ask you whether you, you got married or not. As important as these things are, if you have not sat down to think about them, I want you to know that there is only one thing that will matter at the end of your life. We used to sing a song uh, when I was in secondary school, one Anglican song, only remembered for what we have done. You know the song? very powerful song. so by and large hear me if you keep distracting yourself and not giving God time everything that you are giving time for now will it secure your eternity that's the question you are giving your whole life to a man yet you cannot give God a man you cannot trust a man who can come and say I've changed my mind Kai, I've changed my mind a, a, a lady who can come and say, you know, the only constant thing in life is change. Yet you say, I give you my all. You even say it happily. Please don't laugh. I came with the fire from my retreat. Make sure you are not just laughing carelessly. I'm communicating something very serious. Passion. That you must not come for koinonia for people to see the passion. People will look at Morgan and say, what is this? This fire you have. Why is it just God all the way? God in lecture theater, God everywhere. Are you this fanatical? Absolutely. Absolutely. He said, if you are ashamed of me before men, listen, if you are ashamed of me, I've seen people die, brothers and sisters, I've had the privilege to 
to, to go and minister to bereaved families. I've prayed for people in hospitals. I have seen in my little life the vanity of life. That's not to make you not to get up, but I know that I plan to spend my life on what matters. That at the end of my life, when I stand before him, let me carry mantles of souls and say, Lord, I spent my life. I spent my life to the last serving you. One general that we honor forever, Dr. Miles Munro, a man who cheated death left and right, front and back. There are men who have cheated death. This year, please let there be an awakening. We are going to pray. We are going to pray. For some of us, it is to return to your first love. Ha! Ah. Don't let my love grow cold. I'm crying out. Light the fire again. I need your discipline. I'm crying out. Light the fire. Lord, don't let my life go. Let me not be busy doing ministry and forget my relationship with God. Let me not be busy doing ministry, ministering, traveling around, and everybody is shouting, Apostle Joshua Selman, whereas my personal intimacy with God is faulty. See, let me tell you, men can clap for you, but this is the year you say, Lord, I want to be genuine. I'm tired of pretense. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm tired of people looking at me like a Christian, thinking that I love God, walking based on yesterday's anointing, yesterday's oil, walking based on the applause of yesterday, whereas my today is faulty. Number three, when the rain falls, it brings unusual access into the mysteries and the operations of the kingdom. This is one of the things that we are going to be experiencing in this year of the rain. Unusual access into the mysteries and the operations of the kingdom. Deuteronomy chapter 32. Please media you help us. We have to really be fast. Deuteronomy 32 verse 1 and 2. Let me show you a scripture. Malakata. Deuteronomy 32. Okay, let's just watch. Okay. It says, Give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak, and hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. Verse 2. Read together. How? My doctrine, my mysteries. I will give you certain revelations and it will come in the similitude of the rain. It will, it will be an avalanche. It will come in abundance. Hallelujah. My secrets, my mysteries will come upon you as the rain. No matter how the drizzle is, if you channel it well, it can fill buckets. He says, my doctrine shall drop. He said, my speech shall distill as the dew. High. Abundance. Some of you will open Genesis and you'll be reading Genesis for months. Because you will see things there that you never saw. And God said, that will be the revelation you'll be exploring for two weeks. And God said, a sound planet. That it moves with words. And God said. My doctrine, my mysteries will fall upon koinonia like rain. Ah. So that you will begin to see the puzzles joined together. That these are the keys. These are the operations of the spirit that activate certain dimension of kingdom realities. Brothers and sisters, hear me. The Bible says it has been given unto us to know. The word know is the word intercourse. The same word like a man knowing his wife. It has been given unto us to intercourse. That's the word epignosis. 
a state where you know a thing by becoming that thing not just by hearing about it it's an operation that only exists in the spirit so in the spirit if i want to know how this speaker is i will have a feeling of becoming it accurate knowledge my doctrine shall come upon you like the dew so that many things we have believed that are confusing us and stopping us from experiencing the reality of god when there is an avalanche of access to the mysteries of god some of you will begin to find out what is responsible for the tragedies and the operation of darkness in our families and you will know what to do he said jesus himself knew what to do this year may you know what to do because in the kingdom we arise and we shine when light comes we reign upon the strength of light not when your light is available when it comes when it comes he said they that have sat in darkness have seen a great light a great light a great light a great light daniel chapter 2 verse 19 there is a god that can show men mysteries there is a god we are going to contend for mysteries we'll look at verse 19 22 and 47 long story a king had a dream and forgot it and said if you don't tell me what this dream is and the interpretation i will kill you very simple hallelujah the king had a dream and he forgot it and he gathered all the soothsayers and wise men and said i don't know what you would do go and invoke whatever you can invoke but if you don't tell me this dream i guarantee you you will die and the bible says daniel asked for time he said give me time everybody say time hmm. you don't want revelation god is not mr biggs or chicken republic he said lord as i'm going just let it come I, I didn't have time to prepare. Now that I'm going for the meeting, let it just drop as I'm coming. Don't take the mercy of God for granted. It takes time. Daniel told the king, he said, I can tell you, but I need time. Because it's in the place of intimacy that you experience that rain. And he said, then was what? The secret revealed unto Daniel in a night vision. And Daniel blessed the God of heaven. In the night, while men were snoring and sleeping the rain came and when it came he said daniel this is it sit down you're about to watch a movie and he saw nebuchadnezzar sleeping and he saw what happened verse 22 this was daniel acknowledging god he said he revealed what the deep and secret things he knoweth what is in the darkness and the and light dwelleth with him brothers and sisters may god show us the things that are hidden in darkness that have been responsible for the stagnation of our lives and our families as this rain falls let let it expose things in the name of the lord jesus christ well let's just leave verse 47 first corinthians chapter 2 verse 10 the bible makes us to understand that the Holy Spirit is able to access the mind of God. Have you read that scripture? That the Holy Spirit can reveal to us the things that are in the mind of God. Right? Scripture makes us understand that no man knows the heart of a man save the spirit of that man. And the spirit of God has access to the mind of God. And is able to reveal it to us. He said, but God had revealed them to us. How? By his spirit. That will manifest himself as the rain. He said, For the spirit searched all things, yea, the deep things. May God grant unto us uncommon revelation in this year of the rain. Number what now? Number four. When the rain falls, one of the things that we experience is multiplied dimensions of spiritual power and the anointing multiplied dimensions of spiritual power when you plant a seed and bury it the moment the rain falls that seed begins to push above the earth against gravity and it comes out 
spiritual power. A Christianity that does not demonstrate the power of the Holy Spirit is child's play. There is only one language that is understood in the realm of the spirit and is a language of power. When Moses stood before Pharaoh, I was watching the, a, a, a lovely cartoon yesterday. I don't watch most of, uh, I don't have time self to even watch cartoons. But one caught my attention. Pharaoh, Moses in Egypt. And I mean, it was, it was, it was well animated. I was so touched. Better than many of the things we have watched before. I mean, very, very, very nice and very graphic. When Moses got there, there was no room for long stories. The rods were speaking. This is the year, by the grace of God, where there will be a demonstration of the power of the Spirit. This is a place of power. There must be miracles upon miracles. Breakthrough upon breakthrough. We must, it must be evident that the rain is falling. If you believe that, say amen in the name of Jesus Christ. Resulting to an outbreak of miracles, signs, wonders, breakthroughs, healings. It's impossible to have the Holy Spirit reveal himself as the rain. And will not have healings and miracles. And it will start this night. This night, not next week. This very night. Hallelujah. Some of you, you, you carry the atmosphere of this rain. And step into places. And you see the sick get healed. Look, we need to restore the church to the signs that characterize that God is at work and at alive in people. We trivialize the place of the power of the Holy Spirit. That's why we have a lot of arguments in the body of Christ. We need the power of the Holy Spirit. And by the grace of God, this place will become a habitation of not just His presence, but His power. Let the sick come and be healed. Let the oppressed come and be delivered. Not, not long stories. There are many things in our lives that do, doesn't require counseling. We need a head-on collision with the power of God. And it solves the problem once and for all. Some diseases will die a natural death when they meet the power of God. He said the yoke shall be destroyed, not by oratory. He said because of the anointing. When the rain falls upon us, there will be levels of grace. When God was showing me little visions of things that will happen in the year and I saw some of the things I said my goodness oh Lord do these things let nothing restrict you look brothers and sisters you will see a demonstration of the power of the spirit this year that will shock you not just from here not just from my life from your own life from your own life your hands will do mighty things look at your hands and say this year you will do mighty things Please, I want you to believe it. Look at your hands and say, this year, you carry an unusual unction and you will do mighty things. So we'll see multiplied dimensions of grace, multiplied dimensions of miracles, signs, wonders, manifestations of the power of the Holy Spirit. Next point. When the wind, when the, the rain of the spirit falls upon us. Now take note of what I'm about to share. It will bring unusual dimensions of wealth, prosperity and abundance. For sure. Rain. Now agriculturally speaking, rain is tied to abundance and fruitfulness. Is that true? And one of the things that the Lord spoke to me again and again very notably that will happen in the lives of people is an avalanche of prosperity. I know that many of us have had these things again and again, but please I want you to believe. Hallelujah. Prosperity. I believe in prosperity. Absolutely. Joel chapter 2, please. For time's sake, we'll just look at verse 24 and 26. Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2. It says, And the floors shall be full of wheat, and the fat shall overflow with wine and oil. It says, And ye shall eat in what? Plenty, and be satisfied, and praise the name of the Lord your God, that hath dealt wondrously with you. 
and my people in terms of finances shall never be ashamed do you believe that God is going to change the stories of people look it will be the Bible says when the Lord turn again the captivity of Zion for many of us it will be like a dream people will look at you without the assistance of any uncle or auntie you will rise it will be a mystery God will use you to prove that the rain has fallen upon your land Genesis chapter 2 you do mighty things you do glorious things you're a faithful God awesome is your name 2 verse 5 Genesis chapter 2 from verse 5 listen it says and every plant of the field before it was in the earth and every herb of the field before it grew he said for the lord god had not caused it to rain upon the earth and there was no man to till the ground when you read the verse before it it says how that there was no vegetation why because the rain had not come when the rain falls fruitfulness begins immediately immediately there is a relationship between that dimension of the spirit and your prosperity and i want you to believe it i have prayed this into my own life i have received it i believed it with all my heart this year i will not argue with the word of god leviticus chapter 26 from verse 4 leviticus 26 from verse 4 i'm giving us this scripture let's hurry up and we'll pray Leviticus chapter 26 from verse 4. It says, then I will give you rain. When? And this is the season. The Lord has spoken to us. He said, I will give you rain in due season. And what will be the result? And the land shall yield her increase. And the trees of the field shall yield her fruit. In the name of the Lord Jesus. May that happen for somebody. Brothers and sisters, I have learned in my little life that the race is not to the swift. The battle is not to the strong. Hallelujah. Joseph slept in one night as a servant, as a slave, a property of Egypt. He woke up the next day as the man in command. That would be somebody's story. When the gentleman shared about his UK, um, you know, um, the blessings of the Lord, in my mind I said, that is a drop. We are talking of an ocean an ocean of the, the avalanche of what God will do. Men will look at you and say, whose head did you cut? You will say, no. No. It's the rain. It's the rain. Do you believe this? Or has your suffering of the past blinded you and say, it's like that. It came like that. Do you not believe that God is able to make a table in the wilderness. He said they limited God by saying, can God make a table in the wilderness? A table. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 14. Just look at that and then we'll touch on the remaining. I have to run. Deuteronomy chapter 11, verse 14. I just want to give us scriptures. I want you to read if you believe. One to read everyone. What will be the result? It didn't say your neighbor's corn. There is, there is a, listen, there is an apportioning for you. Listen, this year is not the time you sit down and clap for others and say, you mean God did it for you? Hallelujah. You must insist. Please believe. If you've never believed God for anything, why don't you connect and believe this year? He said that thou mayest gather thy corn and what and what three things your corn your wine and your oil when the rain falls your corn plenty plenty he will cause you to experience it what else do we expect two more right number six 
supernatural restoration when the rain falls in Joel chapter 2 the coming the outpouring the rain and the spirit brought about the restoration he said and I will restore to you the years verse 25 of Joel chapter 2 and I will restore to you the years I will restore to you opportunities I don't care whether it was carelessness I don't care whether it was arm robbery I will restore everybody shout restore. restore we have come to enforce it the Bible says they are taking for a prey and none say it restore 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 he said turn again the captivity of Zion like the streams of the Negev for many families here that the devil has made it look like his Ichabod in this year when the rain falls you will see a tree that was dry you almost want to use it for firewood God will say don't cut it at the scent of water at the scent he said there is hope for a tree even if it be cut off at the scent of water I'm prophesying to someone here it looks like you are in a, a state in your life some of us think we have messed it up there is no way there is no human way, but that's when God is needed. If it's still possible for you, God will be resting. But when it's impossible, he will arise. And I'm speaking to someone, the way God will change your story this year, it will shock you. God, one by one, God will restore everything to the latter. Even what you said, God, is not necessary. God will say, no, 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 I'm too committed. Restoration of joy and peace restoration for the days of tears restoration academic restoration financial restoration marital and relational restorations mm. he said rejoice not over me my enemies he said though i fall yet i will rise while you are sitting down discussing that i died jesus died for only three days while you are discussing, they say, no, he has risen. You are talking about a man who only died for 72 hours. Some of you, you have been subjects of discussion in your family. They looked at you and said, look at. Huh? It's better to even be an idol worshiper. You are mocking God. But this year, my father will arise. You will see God revisiting things that happened 10 years ago and say, I must prove a point. It's not necessary, but they have mocked my name in your life. Do you believe this? I believe it with all my heart. I believe it with all my heart. I believe it with all my heart. God is able to restore. I'd like you to say God is able to restore. And there is nothing you can't do. Oh Lord, my eyes are on be magnified, oh Lord, be magnified, and there is nothing you can do, and there is nothing absolutely nothing, you absolutely do. nothing. Oh Lord, see him wiping your tears in this year of the rain. You can't cry forever. That will be your song when God changes your story. Let men talk. Don't try to defend yourself. There is a defender, the God of your salvation. Oh Lord, oh.
learned in my little life that you don't cry forever. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Just let the rain fall. <laughs> when that rain falls, you will see restorations that you cannot account for. You can't even explain how it happened. Joseph, how did you become a prime minister? Honestly, I don't know. All I know is that I woke up that morning and by evening I was on a throne. Esther, how did a villager like you become the king's wife? I don't know. I didn't instigate Vashti to look for trouble. All I know is that the rain fell. See, when I say the last point, you will know what I'm saying. This year, there will be the falling of many and the rising of others. Trust me. Many who have made mouth and concluded on others, you will see God take people that you mock and sat down and they will rule you. you <laughs> be careful as you speak over people. Because brothers and sisters, there are others who have even said, God, take my life. And God said, are you joking? Wait and see how I, I, I will write my name upon your life. And any man that sees you will know that God is able to restore. He says, son of man, can these bones live again? Can these bones live again? He said, only thou knowest. Only thou knowest. The rain will fall and things will change in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. The last thing that the coming of the rain will do is that the rain brings judgment upon people and territories who oppose God's agenda. Oh yes, there will be a rain. I told you that there will be the falling of many and the rising of many. Genesis chapter 7 verse 4. Genesis chapter 7 verse 4. Let's hurry up. After that we'll look at chapter 19 verse 24. Genesis chapter 7 verse 4. It says, For yet seven days I will cause you to do what? To rain upon the earth forty days and forty nights. And every living substance that I have made I will destroy off from the face of the earth. So the rain does not just come to bless. There is a dimension of the rain that brings judgment. Are you hearing what I'm saying? When it, when it was time to judge the world, it was water. Rain came and caused judgment. There are people who have sat down and believed that they hold the destinies of people in their hands. This year, they will receive of that rain for sure. For sure, that rain will come. Listen, two things happened when it began to rain in Noah's days. It was killing all the people who were laughing at Noah. I said, Noah, for how many years? Noah, we were young, oh. We were young. Those days when you were 70 years, you were a teenager. They say, well, we're teenagers. You were. Now, 120 years, you are still building an ark. Noah said, I know. 120 years ago, he told me rain will fall and it will still happen. And when it was time, God said, Noah, enter your ark. I will close the door by myself. When he closed the door, he said, rain, you are free to come. While the rain was killing others, it was lifting another man's ark. Same rain. Are you seeing that now? The rain was drowning noisemakers and those who have laughed at what God can do. But it lifted the ark of Noah and kept it on a mountain called Mount Ararat. Hallelujah. That rain. Many of you will hear this year that the evil doers that have refused, they, they are 95 years old, they say we won't die. We are sitting to see how you will get married when that rain falls. Are you hearing what I'm saying? See, there are men who have exchanged their life for others. Is that true? In this year of the rain, God will bring to justice. I tell you, it's, it's, there is no prayer of mercy. It's called a written judgment. It's a judgment that has been stamped and it must be executed. Hallelujah. The rain bringing judgment. Two scriptures, you can just write it quickly. Genesis chapter 19 from verse 24 and Exodus chapter 9 verse 23. Genesis 19, 24, Exodus 9, 23. You don't have to project it. But all of these things talk about rain. 
One time the Egyptians made noise against God. Rain came. Rain of hailstones, brimstones. It came and landed upon all of them. There will be rain this year. In this country, Nigeria, there will be rain. I saw it in visions. There are people you see bragging today. They will not see August this year. I'm telling no, 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 no. It's, it's the truth. They will die, not just, they will die shameful deaths. God will sign upon their death that I did it. The same way terrorists take responsibility. They say we are the ones that remove that head. David removed the head of Goliath and lifted it up. I'm the one who did it. God will do certain things and leave his signature and say I did it. Hallelujah. Before we quickly pray, what does it take to experience the rain? We've told us what will happen. What the rain brings. What does it take to experience the rain very quickly? Number one, genuine hunger for more of God. You want to experience the Holy Spirit as the rain this year. It's not just as a prophetic word. Isaiah 44 verse 3 very quickly. Genuine hunger for more of God. That rain will only flow to those who are hungry. Those who are thirsty. Those who are serious with God. He said for I will pour water upon who? Him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. In that similitude I will pour out my spirit upon thy seed. And my blessing upon thy offspring. You must be hungry. You must be desirous for more of God. You must be desirous. That's what it takes. You must have genuine hunger. Number two. You must have a determination to see his kingdom come. The rain does not just come for nothing. The purpose of the rain is for the harvest. The purpose of the rain is to introduce a new season. You must have a determination to see his kingdom come across lives, across territories. That means if the priorities of the kingdom are not an important thing, you don't need the rain. Why do you need the rain? If you do not have a determination to see his kingdom come. So you must be determined that this year, my partnership, koinonia, my partnership with God to see his kingdom come will be uncompromised. Number three, what does it take to experience the rain? Prayer. Say prayer. prayer. Heartfelt, continual prayer. Zechariah chapter 10, please, verse 1. Heartfelt prayers. You want to see the rain, you must pray it. You pray down the rain. Zechariah chapter 10 Zechariah 10 verse 1 we have it everybody read one two read stop he said do what ask don't wish he said the moment you sense the season has come start asking ask ye of who the lord the owner the owner ask him and say lord this is the season let the rain come he said ask ye of the lord rain in the time of the latter rain so shall the lord make bright clouds and give them showers of rain to everyone grass in the field listen listen we are going to ask because he said we should ask. This is the season of the rain. There's gonna be a great awakening. There's gonna be a great revival in our land. There's gonna be a great awakening. And everyone who calls on Jesus, they will be saved. He said, ask for the rain. 
Zaria is our territory, it's our jurisdiction. Hallelujah. We must pray and say, Lord, give us the keys of this city. Give it to us. In this season of the rain, we ask for the rain. Massive salvation, massive prosperity, massive signs and wonders. A demonstration of the spirit that will make us walk like gods upon this city. Hallelujah. More grace, fresh anointing upon the messages. Fresh anointing upon the people increase of all sorts numerically spiritually all these things are the things that come with the rain testimonies and miracles for people that in this year the barren will take their children that in this year many people's situation will change these are the things that happen when the rain comes hallelujah james let's look at an example of one person who prayed and the rain came james chapter 5 please oh I already feel the anointing of the spirit oh my goodness James James chapter 5 we we'll read verse 16 and 18 there's no need reading verse 17 he said confess your faults to one another and pray one for another that ye might be healed let's read the second clause are you ready one to read the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous man availed much and let's see an example verse 18 he said and he prayed again he had prayed and the heavens were shut and there was no rain and when it was now time for the rain to come what happened he went back and the bible says he prayed again and the heaven gave rain and as a result the earth brought forth her fruit so we are going to be praying he said ask ye rain ask ye rain whenever you see clouds forming it tells you rain wants to come that's why he began to pray and he told the servant go and check the servant said nothing he said i will still pray but when he saw clouds forming he said that is it that is it pray. and the heavens gave rain financial rain spiritual rain all kinds of things we are going to see the hand of god in a very mighty way God is going to lift us and exalt us in ways that will honor him. God is going to make a spectacle out of us. And the goal of this first meeting tonight is to bring us into agreement. Because you must agree. That's the purpose of this little exhortation. To bring us to a point where you say, Lord, that is it. I, I believe it. I believe it. I believe it for my life. I refuse to argue. It's my season. Not koinonia season. It's my season of the rain. My season of, not a rain, the rain. I have exact expectations. We are going to be praying. And you are going to be telling the Lord, as far as it depends on me, I am ready to play my own role. Just supply the grace. And I tell you, for many of you, January will not end. Because he said he will bring that rain in the first month beginning from the first month many of us will begin to see things happen it's 16 days and and it does not take time when rain comes it's an avalanche it may take time to see the formation but if the cloud be full of rain except they are not full he said they empty themselves upon the earth hallelujah and so we trust god that he will reveal himself there will be such an outpouring upon the campus there will be outpourings of the spirit outpourings everywhere that from this place like 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 infernos of fire it will shoot to territories one of my one of my goals this year is that all of the external ministrations that god will grant me grace i want to take this rain to those territories hallelujah my focus this year is to take this rain to territories. There are people that must catch this rain. 
Hallelujah. I will be a dispenser of this rain. A dispenser of this rain. That you step into a place and you cause bright clouds to be open. And rain, rain just comes upon people. Unlimited breakthroughs. I told God, I said, I'm, I'm more than ready. I am I'm more committed to this work like never before. We're having our retreats tomorrow. The leaders and the workers in the house. And part of the many things we're going to be discussing is how to refire ourselves. To position ourselves first to receive of this rain and to be dispensers of this rain. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. And so the Lord is going to grant us grace. We are going to do three things very quickly before we conclude this service. Number one is we are going to pray. And I want everybody to participate inside and outside. I know that there are some of you, there's no space all around. Don't worry. Find a corner and pray. This is about your life. We are going to be praying. All of the seven expectations become your expectations for the year. We will pray it. And we will pray for grace. That dimension of the spirit to be able to play our own part. Hallelujah. And after that, I believe that God is going to release upon us the supply of his spirit to ignite this grace. It's an anointing service. Rise upon your feet. Rise upon your feet, everybody. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and lift your voice and begin to thank the Lord for this word. Give him thanks. Give him thanks everywhere, inside and outside. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Thank you for your prophetic word. It's my season of the rain and outpouring of the dimension of the spirit upon my life. I thank you. Hallelujah. Your voice and pray. Lord, I receive it. I receive it. It's not just a word for koinonia. I receive it. Lord, we receive it. Lord, we receive it. Hallelujah. Pick up your notebooks. Prayer point number two. We are going to pray all those seven expectations. If you can help us, media, fine. If it's down, no problem. Hallelujah. Those seven expectations from massive salvation of souls, one by one, salvation of, of souls, increased love and hunger for God, access to mysteries, multiplied spiritual power, dimensions of wealth, restoration, judgment. One by one, you're going to personalize it for yourself, for your family. 
Lift up your voice and begin to pray. Please take it seriously. Lord, a harvest of souls. A harvest of souls. Let the rain. For the eternal church salvation, let the rain bring transformation in the name of Jesus Christ. As we travel around the regions of this nation, as we travel even beyond the borders of this nation, thank you, salvation, the rain, the rain of your spirit, bringing salvation, the rain of your spirit, bringing salvation, the rain. Jesus, greater unction in the name of Jesus, greater unction in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray for a new dimension of financial prosperity, a new dimension of wealth and abundance upon my life, upon your house, upon Koinonia. We step into fresh levels. We tap into the mystery of divine supplies. 
in the name of Jesus. I pray for every family. I pray for every koinonia member. They are stepping into abundance. 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 Lord, you will restore. You will restore. Restore destinies. Restore opportunities. Restore anointing. Restore mantles. Restore visions. Restore dreams. Restore graces. Let there be restoration. Don't be tired. Pray. So take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. Lord, we demand a restoration of all the years that the Kanka worm has eaten, the Palma worm. We command a reversal of opportunities that have been lost. We declare judgment, judgment, the rain will bring judgment upon evil doers, judgment upon wicked men, judgment. Hallelujah. The seventh thing we say that will happen is that God will bring judgment. Hear me. There are men who have tied down the counsel of God over families. There are powers, there are forces that tie down the destinies of men. We are going to pray. Hallelujah. Still on that point. The Lord, as the rain falls, these powers, these forces, we command judgment. They must crumble because I must rise this year. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Pray like a believer. Oh yes. The forces of darkness. Ancestral forces. Covenant. Yokes of darkness. Jesus paid the price already. Jesus paid the price in soon. Jesus paid the price already. Jesus paid the price in soon. Therefore, we put him back on the ground of the substitutionary sacrifice. On the ground of the Hallelujah. 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 Now, before we cry for a supply of grace as we start the year, I'd like you to mention one thing that you know you need this rain to do in your life. Hallelujah. There are many things and we have prayed about some of them. But for adventure there are expectations that many of us have. I'd like you to lift your voice and say, Lord, I make a demand. This is the season of the rain. This and that must happen in my life. Open your mouth and pray. Open your mouth and pray. Pray. Outside, make sure you are praying. Everywhere outside, make sure you are praying. Ha porote 
Hallelujah. That rain must fall. Hallelujah. But there are conditions. I'm about to pray for you. Hallelujah. You cannot do spiritual things with your strength. You need a supply of the spirit. Hallelujah. And as we begin this year, freshness. There are many of us who must start the year on a good note. I know that for most of us here, we have been having different kinds of programs, fastings, personal fastings, some ah, I sense the rain, my goodness. I hear the sound of physical rain in my ears, physical rain. Hallelujah. So we are going to pray. Something will come upon you. This is how to start the year. Supply of grace. No laziness. That supply of grace. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, please, as I pray for you. Lift your hands as I pray for you, inside and outside. I want to pray for you, for it takes His grace. It takes that supply of the Spirit to help you align to the conditions that will make the Holy Spirit reveal Himself as a rain. You have asked, but you have your parts to play. And we have to pray. Lift your hands as I pray. Thank you, Jesus. Lord Jesus, I pray that in a mighty way you will come upon your people. You told us that you will come to us as the rain. As the rain. And right now in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ as I pray. Let that rain in strange dimensions and in strange proportions begin to fall on people. At the count of three. One, two, three. Let the rain fall right now. Shake it, take it, take it, take it. Let the rain fall inside and outside. Inside and outside. My goodness, let showers of rain. Lord, let showers of rain. Don't just stand watching people fall. Pray and say, Lord, I receive. Let the showers of rain fall upon everyone. The grace to pray and keep asking. The grace. We receive it, oh Lord. Fresh passion. Fresh fire. The dew of heaven. Ah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Keep the hands lifted up. Some of you will feel physical rain. Physical rain coming on you. Physical rain. Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ, I pray right now by the power of the Holy Spirit that those who need the refreshing, 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 the refreshing of the rain the refreshing of the rain let it wash away every failure of 2014 the refreshing of the rain 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 in the name of Jesus the refreshing of the rain I command it I declare it the refreshing of the rain it comes upon you inside and outside the refreshing of the rain hallelujah now one last thing I'll do and then I'll prophesy and we're done listen lift your hands please receive this this will come heavy upon us the Lord began to tell to me about this right from retreat there is a grace that you need to run this year with. There's no time for me to begin to tell us some of the things that the Lord revealed to me, but now is the time. 
there is a grace upon this house for everyone that is connected to run with it and it's time to release it i received it in the secret place just lift your hands father you told me to stretch my hands and you will release that grace as you showed me in the secret place right now i release i stand in my office and i command take the grace for 2015 take the grace for 2015 take the grace the supply of the spirit the supply of the spirit i re i release it as i received in the secret place i release it for your academics for your ministry for your business take the grace inside and outside for your family i release it i activate that supply i activate that supply hallelujah hallelujah please lift your hands as i prophesy into your life for the year very quickly just hallelujah in the name of jesus christ i command that this year 2015 shall be for you a year of supernatural ease in the name of the lord jesus christ the grace that brings ease the grace that brings ease i release it to your life in the name of jesus christ i pray that the spirit of prayer and supplication in 2015 let it fall upon your life now grace to pray grace to pray receive it in the name of jesus christ hallelujah i declare that from january to december every month becomes for you a fruitful month in the name of jesus this year they will not be going up and coming down your part will be as a shining light that shines brighter and brighter in the name of jesus the dimension of favor that has been earmarked for you and for this house to walk in we receive it and i release it to your life right now financial favor marital favor hallelujah i prophesy upon your life and upon this house every sinner every soul that must be saved through your hands this year let the rain supply grace to bring in that harvest in the name of jesus christ whatever you struggled with in 2014 i declare that in this year you will not even need to fight you will hold your peace and the lord will fight for you hallelujah i pray for everyone's finances in this year 2015 may the lord do something in our lives that will cause our mouths to open with laughter in the name of jesus christ we prophesy supernatural marriages this year we prophesy supernatural childbirth this year we prophesy supernatural jobs in the name of jesus christ i declare upon you although it's a year of election but in the name of jesus christ i place a seal of exemption you do not live by the sword and so you will not die by the sword no one here connected to this ministry will be a victim of bomb blast will be a victim of terrorists in the name of jesus christ i declare that as you travel all through this year by air on the road you are protected in the name of jesus christ accident is far from your life in the name of jesus christ this is the year when we forbid you from begging 
in the mighty name of Jesus Christ you will be the one to bless many in the name of Jesus Christ I pray for your academics this year step into an unusual dimension of mental acumen this is the year you will record five points ah, yeah, 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 yeah. oh my goodness this is the year first class students will arise many of you will come with the spirit of Elijah and you will beat the standards you have set before hallelujah I pray for you this year your hunger for God from January till December nothing will kill that hunger the same way you are excited about God that's how you'll be excited the last koinonia service in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ everyone that mocked your God in 2014 that said if your God is alive let him prove himself I'm prophesying to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that the mighty one of Israel will arise and speak for you this year hallelujah 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 lift your hands wave it to Jesus and give him thanks now keep standing very quickly there are people here inside and outside you've never made Jesus Lord of your life this is a good time to start probably someone invited you maybe you're a new student maybe you are new in this city maybe you just came visiting or you've given your life to Christ at one time but you have not committed yourself to be serious with spiritual things and you're saying man of God this year I mean business with him those two categories of people please find your way to the front right now right now wherever you are inside and outside don't wait for anybody to come rush and come to the front and i'll be ready to pray with you very quickly those who are saying this year i mean business with the lord please come and stand here celebrate them they are coming they are coming the devil is a liar not after this prayer outside i believe that there are many people leave your seat and come it's called koinonia the place of intimacy the place of encounter you're saying, Lord, I want to start afresh with you. I'm tired of pretending I mean business with you. God bless you. Keep coming. Keep coming. Koinonia, celebrate them. No matter how far you are outside, there is still room for you in front. Make your way very quickly to the front. Hallelujah. Take everything that is of God very seriously this year. Praise the Lord. Those of you in front, lift your hands as I lead you to pray. You are not reciting a poem. You have to believe in your heart for your confession to make sense. For your confession to be able to bring you salvation. So say after me, Lord Jesus, I truly believe in you. I make you the Lord of my life. I believe you died for me and you rose again for my justification. I confess your lordship and I receive your life into my spirit. I declare from today that I'm a child of God. From today that I leave the past and I contend for the future. I declare that every lifestyle and every habit that has tied me down this year, I make a fresh start in the name of Jesus. Now keep your hands lifted as I pray for you. Father, there is no one who comes to you that you will cast away. I'm asking in the name of Jesus that these salvations will be genuine and these commitments will be genuine. I cause every power right now I cause every spirit. There are some of you here, there are powers that are tying you down. And stopping you from making progress. I command that they leave you now. Never to return. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you Jesus. Thank you so much for making this decision. Now I'd like you to follow the ushers. Just see the gentlemen waving their hands there. 
just at our back. I'd like you to follow them. They will have your details, welcome you more warmly, and give you some instructions. Koinonia, celebrate them. <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Before we take the announcements, can you help me celebrate Pastor Jakes and Bishop Stan? These guys are so busy now, so having them around to start off the year with us is a great blessing. Thank you guys. God bless you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Um, before we end, they'll come and just speak blessings upon the house. Um, now, all those who are worshiping with us for the first time, what a, what a blessing, what a blessing. And this is to encourage every one of us. The Bible says, do the work of an evangelist. Make up your mind that this year you will never come for Koinonia alone. Hallelujah. We have prayed you are an evangelist. Hallelujah. You are going to invite your friends, invite your loved ones, and so many people to partake of what um, the Lord is doing in your life. So let's have those who are worshipping with us inside and outside. If this is your first time, please make your way to the front. We want you to feel welcome. We love you. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you so much for coming. Make sure nobody sits close to you who is worshipping with us for the first time. No matter how shy they are, encourage them. Encourage them. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. God bless you. Koinonia, celebrate them. You can do more than this. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Thank you so much, ladies and gentlemen, for coming. This is Koinonia. Hallelujah. Thank you for making our time to come. We're here every Friday. and God is doing mighty things in our lives. I guarantee you that you will never be the same. In the name of Jesus Christ. Something will happen to you that will change your life radically. Praise the Lord. We want to pray for you. There is a blessing. And when we bless you, you are blessed. Hallelujah. Saints of God, stretch your hands and let's prophesy. Remember, you are anointed. So stretch your hands and speak over their lives. We bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. You become passionate about spiritual things from today. Every weight upon your life, we command it to be removed. We declare that from today your hunger for God increases and you will experience breakthroughs in your life beyond your imagination. May the Lord do mighty things through you. May the Lord bless the works of your hands in the name of Jesus. Once again, thank you very much, especially for those of us who came outside Zaria. We appreciate it. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages, subscribe to the channel, comment on it, like it. See you on our next video. Bye! Pray! Pray! Pray for your destiny! The phase of development. Lord, grant me the discipline.